Peter Schickley, 1997, he was nominated again. Yeah. A definitive biography of P.D.Q. Buck. Maybe, I mean, it's- So, it, and that it's, was, yeah, that was a weird one. He somehow, but he lost that one, right? He lost that one to Al Franken. Part of me was like, did he have some fucking dirt on some people? Like, was he, you know, was yeah, Epstein's, Epstein's situation- Maybe I was, on, I was I was a is... house player for the for the, for the island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw. Goes, I, I took movie. notes. I took notes. Yeah, like it's it's honestly borders on conspiracy territory. It's conspiracy. Shafir. And in today's episode, we have a mystery. A mystery so deep, we needed to bring in an expert on the subject, Danny Polishuk. Danny, as you know, is the host of the popular podcast, The Boys Cast, uh, with his Canadian friend, Ryan Long. They do it every week. And over the course of their research, Danny came across a devious and horrific tale. A tale so dark it could only be covered on the skeptic tank. It's the story of Peter Schickele, a man who won four straight Grammys for Best Comedy Album four years in a row and never won another one again. A man probably you've never heard of. I know I have not. So Danny and I did a deep dive into this man and the mystery surrounding this incredible streak. Four straight Grammys. Wild. And that's what we do today. We break it down and we cover it. Like I said, Danny's on uh, the Boys Cast. Um, let me get this hair off my thing. Um, it's a fun episode. We sat right here. We talked about it. We did some deep research. Um, before I start, you should know that I am uh, announcing a tour. My fall winter tour. It's the Wrong Side of History tour. The pre-sale starts April 26th. I probably said it's April 25th, but it's April 26th, 10 a.m. local time. Austin, Boston, Philadelphia, um, Madison, Minneapolis, Chicago, St. Louis, Louisville, Indianapolis, Kansas City, Iowa City. Tickets go on sale. Uh... April 26th at 10 a.m. local time. Pre-sale code for all those shows will be evil. However, the pre-sale code for the June 23rd, 24th shows in Austin, Texas will not be evil. Pre-sale code for that will be Trans Beauty. That's right. Doing a show at Rogan's Club, and I think it's time we give a little back to the community. So that pre-sale code is Trans Beauty. Two words. Won't be written down anywhere. Um, also, you know, I'm going to be in uh, all, all over Europe and the UK. Uh, uh, Glasgow on uh, April 27th. Uh, London, a uh, show added April 29th. Manchester, I believe a show is added April 30th. Um, Amsterdam on May 3rd, followed by Stockholm, followed by Berlin, followed by Vienna, followed by Ljubljana followed by Cluj Naboka, followed by Bucharest, followed by Athens, Greece. But that's not the Wrong Side of History Tour. The Wrong Side of History Tour starts, kicks off June 23rd at Joe Rogan's Club and then goes on to uh, uh, Parks Casino outside Philadelphia on uh, um, October or something, and that'll start. that'll really start it. The, the the Vic is um, in Chicago is November second or fourth I forget I don't know Boston lots of shows get tickets but right now we got a mystery to unravel I'm Ari Shafir skeptic tank wait whatever and this is the curious case of Peter Schickler. Let's start. 
Danny Palashok is here. How's it going? Uh, good. Toronto's finest. Yep. Um, Toronto or London? No, nah, I'm from Toronto. Okay. Like London, Ontario? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, Toronto. Um, Nearby. <laughs> every time I announce a, like a show's in London, there's always those fucking Ontario people like, London, Ontario? Like, oh, <laughs> like, no, dude. No. No. Yeah, sorry, dude. Um, Who has a, Someone has a joke about it. London, though, right? About London, Ontario? Yeah. Tom Segura, I think that's one. What is it? I can't even remember, but he has some joke about somewhere in London, Ontario, which I imagine people in London, Ontario love. Love hearing it. Yeah, the fact that they made it. Dude, yeah, if you get a local reference on a guy like Segura, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I used to the, Graham the, K, I'd always say something, he'd always look at me like, what the fuck? Like, because <laughs> I've been to Canada too much. Yeah, you just know all the... Yeah, I'll know, like, a booker at Yuck Yucks, and he'll be like, <laughs> just look at me like, you're Canadian? Yeah. Like, no? He goes, no. Hmm. Just know of it? Yeah. Um, uh, Canadian was like my black room. That was. Like black rooms he, I remember you used shitty. to come up. He used to do yeah. uh, Joey's a lot. The that week. was the best. That was the best. Yeah. Did I meet you there? Um, I don't think. Maybe we met very briefly, but I, I remember you used to come up and do that. It's done now, clandestinely, right? Yeah. It was the weirdest thing. Is so her whole deal was like she wanted weed to be legal because it was yeah. illegal, and she's like, "We're gonna do this thing." She was an activist. She was an activist, and then we're gonna have this cool like weed room, and then they made weed legal, and they go, "You can't do this." Because it got regulated. They well, it got regulated, and they go, "Look, okay, it's like smoking. You're not allowed to smoke indoors." Wow. So it was the they craziest. They shut down that, and they, did they shut down the other one too? Uh yeah. Vape uh, lounge, vapor the, lounge, the hot box or whatever. Oh, not hot box. Vapor um, lounge. Vape, yeah, vape uh, on the one on Young Street. Yeah, I think they're all gone. Wow. Because they straight up were just like, "You're not allowed to." They're like, "Okay, you won. You're not allowed to smoke indoors." Wow. That's dumb. <laughs> They it was that, crazy. They did in Australia where they're like, hey, you can't have smoking around around food. Mm-hmm. They separate the bars. Yeah. And a lot of like outdoor patio bars in Australia. So so it was like, all right, the smokers are over there and so and the food's over there. I'm like, well, can I take my sandwich and go eat it with my smoker friends? And they're like, no. I'm like, wait, I can't I can't have my food around the smoke. Yeah. I get the smoke not around the food, <laughs> but like yeah, yeah, I yeah. can't go there. And they're like, no. Like, That's a weird one. You guys haven't thought this through. Yeah, but also Australia, I went there when I was a kid and they charge you for ketchup packets. And I was like, this is such a bizarre society. Really? Yeah. Well, because every ketchup packet, like a portion of that goes to help Aboriginal families like, get, get their children <laughs> No, because they cared the least. About, I remember they were like, "You, this country cares the least about their Aboriginals out of any country that has them. Yeah, there really is a sense that like they marched them off like planks. Yeah, yeah, in, like, yeah. Like Tasmania, like clear, like clear the forest. Yeah, that was the one where you go like, this feels even dirtier than yeah. Canada or America. It's like, well, they're, full, they're just not educated. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're like, no, get rid of them. Um, yeah, yeah, they were cool. But now they're like, there's a sentiment of like, we could have just finished it off. We have to deal with this. <laughs> well, no, now they're they're kind of coming around like everywhere else is. So then they're trying to like be like, okay, sorry for trying to kill you. Sorry for trying to kill you. Can you still be be over five two though? Uh, yeah, they are pretty small. They're just more shorter. Yeah. yeah, but they have they they play mean didgeridoos. Not Only to, ones. Yeah. Only ones that really play it. Yeah. You ever tried to play one? It's fucking hard. I you have to be able far. to inhale and ex. Is the shofar the same where you have to be able to inhale and exhale at the same time? No, you got to go like this. Yeah, the shofar is like more like a... You got to blow it like that. And if you don't get it quite right, it just goes... Yeah, so like, so I guess the... So I tried, I couldn't do it, but what did you do? You have to be able to, like, it's like circular breathing where you have to be pushing out air while you're taking in air. Wow. Oh, did you re- do i guess i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> Mate? No. um uh i've already done the introduction but yes. you know danny from boys cast and from his own uh sketch instagram Sketches, account yeah i do lots of sketches and stuff uh what's your then, instagram uh danny jokes you can danny find jokes. me there danny jokes generally i hate when people just don't use their name but your name is so fucking retarded it's, i have no chance yeah yeah danny my, jokes is better for yeah, you. yeah 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 like i i had literally there were so many times too where I was like, should I? I was, I, th- I, I, there was a point too. I remember when I started comedy where I was like, should I change my name? Oh, because which would have probably been a good idea to be honest. It's my one piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Yeah, and that's what I'll give everyone else. It's, it's. We didn't know. There's no reason to use your real name. No, it's none. moronic. In none. fact, it's a detriment to you and to your fucking whoever they're gonna find. And it had already been like a point of consternation in my life. Because, you know, you're on the phone, like, with some customer service, and they go, like, what's your name? And then I spell my name, and they're like, hold on. And, like, I'm just like, holy fuck. And then I don't know what I was thinking. And then I started doing comedy for, like, two years. I go, I guess. And it wasn't even too late. Yeah. 
Like I could have changed my name until four years ago. Probably. <laughs> yeah, fine. probably. You're just like, no, I've already got these five <laughs> fifty followers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, they, they we had this guy named Dave Tyree. When we were starting, he changed. He just added, and but it was spelled T Y R E, and everyone pronounced it Tyre. Yeah. And he was like, "It's Tyree," so we just added an E. Yeah, so that's fine. Pronounce it. Yeah, that's. But also, just that alone will let people throw off the fucking scent. Yeah. Of finding where you live. Yeah, for sure. And like for a from a Canadian perspective, because like when you're crossing the border and stuff, it, it, especially if you don't like at the time oh. you don't have a visa, if they you know if they like see your name or something, then they're like, "What are you coming to do comedy here?" Whereas if you didn't have your like, I just didn't. Yeah. I didn't think it through, and now I'm stuck with it. Yeah. I'm stuck. Same way. Yeah. Um, what do you want to tell me about? This is an interesting thing. This is an interesting thing. This is a this is a bit of a conspiracy. This is a, have a you conspiracy. Ever had, uh, in my opinion, it's okay. a conspiracy. It's a comedy conspiracy. Have you ever had a, anybody bring on a comedy conspiracy? A, cons- a comedy conspiracy. I like that. No. Okay. So Let me think. No, I don't think so. Okay. So I was on a podcast. Yeah. And use the laptop for this so we can look up facts. Cool, cool. Okay, yeah. so I was uh, I was actually hoping you would have it because there was something I wanted you to. I wanted you to get a. I don't know if you've watched anything of this guy. I try not to. Okay, so I was on this podcast and we were talking about uh, Adam Sandler. Uh, oh, sorry for the listeners at home. A podcast is like internet radio. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, so I was on this podcast. We were talking about like Adam Sandler's. Um, uh, what was what was his first album? Not the, uh, the the one with uh, uh, they're all gonna laugh at you. Yeah, right? that was a great one. It's Amazing sketch. Only really no stand up. No stand up. No, it was sketches and there were some songs, right? Yeah. And so and then I remember being like, he won the Grammy for that, right? And then and then as we're talking, uh, so someone was like, yeah, I think so. And I go, I don't know though. Let me look it up. And it was I, the most popular album. It when was it came out. Insane. We all passed it around. There was a few albums that I remember everyone having. Eddie Murphy had two. Yep. Dice had one. Uh, and then another one was big, but not as big as the one. Which is Dice. Dice, yeah. And it was just like everyone made tapes, copied it. When you had a dual cassette recorder, it's like, sweet, make that. And by the time you met, some of the rec- recordings were just like, play it, you'll be quiet as you listen. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, so it was like grainy. Of course. But right. we all had it at Sleepaway Camp. And it was yeah, like, me what too. The teacher would come in, like, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Yeah. Um, so the two, the two Eddie Murphy ones, the Dice one, and this one. Yes. Okay, so, and this is actually like somewhat of a segue with the Dice thing. Okay, so we're talking about it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go look up because uh, I was like, I, I'm sure he must have won the Grammy. And I go look it up and I go, who is the fuck is this guy? Peter Shickley. Peter Shickley. OK, if you go look up the Grammy Awards and now I'm going to say this. I don't obviously the Grammys are bullshit. Like I, I, I they have are to, bullshit. I have to start at this point where like so people are like, oh, what you think like the Grammys are like what really makes like what whatever. So here, here, okay. So here's what a lot of people don't know: the 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 Grammys in general generally goes to either the, the a good singer or someone who's popular and the good singer, kind of yeah. like the, the Oscars do, where like a real independent movie has no chance. Sure, uh, but of the major movies, these are the best ones. Right, but and, but the Grammys are even worse because I when I was starting, it was always like, I can say this now because he's dead. Bob Saget, who was never that good a comic, and he was always nominated. Yeah, every three years, whenever he had something, and we were all like, that guy sucks though. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's good on the TV show, the family TV shows, sure. but like this isn't good. Yeah, like, how does that get nominated? And Kathy Griffin and like Margaret Cho way past her prime, mm-hmm. and just only famous people, and they were like. Why has Kyle Kinane never been? Okay, well then you're not gonna like this. No, okay, <laughs> you are not gonna like what I'm about to tell you. Yeah. So I go look up Grammy Award winners, yeah. right, for comedy album. Yeah. And this guy Peter Shickley, I go, and this should have been the year that it would have been Adam Sandler. And so this guy Peter Shickley wins the Grammy for best comedy album in 1990, 1991, 1992, and 1993. He wow. beats Dice. He four beat dice. dice. He beat dice four dice. From 1990 to 1993, the Shickley's PDQ comedian. bash recordings earned him four consecutive wins for Grammy Award Best Comedy Album. And he's not famous. He, he's Not only is he not famous, if you go to his... So he's a composer, okay? He's a classical composer. So when I found out about this, I was like... I'm like kind of a comedy like nerd a bit. I know quite a bit about comedy. Yeah. Never heard of this guy, okay? I go... Like and I'm like, this is this makes no sense. If you go to his website, Peter Shickley's website, yeah, doesn't mention the fact that he won four Grammys. Really? He's like, I don't know if he's embarrassed about it or what. It is, and like you look at the people he beat. He beat Perf- like 
Kinnison. Wow. He beat Dice. He beat. And I think in those days they were given. Well, let's see who won the Grammys. He beat. Oh, oh, and here's the thing. Okay, so all the years before totally makes sense. You'll look at them and you go, every person who won should have won. And the years after makes sense. It's just those four years that what? make absolutely. Just go look up uh, Best Comedy What I want to see is for Grammy. Best Comedy Album. Okay, let's see. Best Comedy Album Grammy. Go to the Wikipedia because it will show yeah. them. In the... So what I want to know is also when did they go from young or just like the Best Comedy Album to, hey, we're not listening to these anymore. Just give us the names and we'll vote based on that. I'm telling Just go look at. Uh, I got. I got. I didn't get Louis mad at me, but when he was like. When he was like nominated for the Grammy for the first time since 2017, yeah. you know, and I was like, I was like, I'm nominated. I was like, good, but fuck those people, dude. They fucking only fa- do famous people. And you could tell he was like, oh, I actually care about my Grammy wins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes, uh, I'm famous. Uh, let's see, history. Okay, 1959. Well, yeah, I, I start, started those. at 1980. Yeah, that's good. Oh, but Bill Cosby, revenge. Bill Cosby went three, four in a row. No, Bill wow. Cosby's the goat of the Grammys. Damn. So it was Alan Sherman, who I've heard of. Um, in 63. I would not look at 64. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Cosby, 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 Cosby. <laughs> God damn. Wow. This guy should be famous. <laughs> he is for something. The runners up were Woody Allen, Alan Sherman again, Jonathan Winters. So this is like, wow. Hardcore but, so you, but honestly, you go like, that's. He r- lost to Flip Wilson. Dude, they say it's hard for black people. <laughs> fucking shit, bro. This is in the 60s. They're fucking dominated. Right. But you would look at that and you go like, that checks out. Like George he- Carlin, FM and AM uh, yep. in 1973. I did my two specials ago, a little bit based on this split album. Um, Cheech and Chong, Pryor, 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 Steve Martin, Steve Martin, Robin Williams. This is 80. Uh, Rodney Dangerfield. You've heard of like all, all people. checks out though. You're Pryor like these again. people should have won. Yeah, the backups for Richard Pryor was Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks, a second <laughs> one. History of the Report one. Alvin and the Chipmunks. That's interesting. And various artists for Airplane. Gilda Radner was a runner up of to to to, to uh, and so was Richard Pryor. Wow. Father Guido Sarducci, who I loved. Okay. Yeah. So it makes sense, right? Yeah. Like yeah. nothing. Like you're not like th- there's there's no Eddie pattern. Murphy comedian 1984. Yeah. Now we're getting to people that we know. Sure. Weird Al, eat it, makes sense. Yep. Sorry, I don't want to go through these, but I'm just fine. So this maybe this just will be set up. 1986, the runners up were Cheech and Chong, Billy Crystal, Joe Piscopo, who you have to stand was, was was he was he was huge. Though. He yeah. was big. Weird Al Yankovic, another one. Um, Whoopi Goldberg won. Yeah. Which, but brother. she was, you know, she was a big... She was a legit recording. I mean, a yeah. um, uh, comedian. Bill Cosby again. God damn. Uh, Robin Williams and Night of the Met, which is his biggest one. Robin yep. Williams, Good Morning Vietnam. Okay, runners up, George Carlin. Whoopi Goldberg, runners up. Jonathan Winters, Weird Al. And then, after Robin but, Williams went for Good Morning Vietnam, Peter Shickley comes in. Yeah, for PDQ Bach. Which, so I'll tell you what the, the PDQ bit is. PDQ Bach, okay. So PDQ Bach is, he's the 20... Second son of Sebastian Bach, like the composer. Twenty second, okay, or whatever, or something. He's like the long lost son that they didn't know about. He's like the whatever, because I guess maybe he had all these kids, mm-hmm. and then he was the one that they like forgot about. Box kid. That was his, that was the character. That was the character. It was okay. a bit. So he, it's like it's classical, like composer comedy. So I've I've only met two people who have ever heard of this guy. Okay, one of them was um, if you know. Uh, this guy Jonathan Schwartz, he's like Chris Italia's friend. If you ever met him, he's like some producer or something. Okay. But he's like a he's like I know him because one, he's a comedy nerd. But he's like oh, I'm also a classical music nerd. You know who Schwartz? That that guy knows, knows has, has heard of him. Okay, wow. so look who he beat. So first year, Sandra Bernhardt, which you have to understand, she was almost like the originator of, in some I think of alt comedy. She did like dive bar kind of stuff, like like um. Like, what's the word? Almost like a, uh, there's a word for it. Like late night, you know how singers, when you just have one spotlight on with like yeah, 30 people in the room? Yeah, yeah, Um, That kind of vibe was her vibe. Um, So anyway, that's what got her on Roseanne and everything. Emma Bombeck, don't know who that is, but I've heard of her. Mother her the know. second oldest profession. Interesting. Dice Clay for Dice. He beat Dice Clay. That and was Sam he was... Kinison for Wild Thing. Yeah, so that's his first year. And, like, I'm willing to concede that one year they go, like, hey, this was we're going really a good. weird direction. Yeah, or they, we've gone to it. So sometimes I heard a, I heard, sorry, I don't mean to keep it around. No, 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 This no, no, is no, very no. interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. Um, I heard an interview with the woman who uh, directed Juno or wrote it, I forget. Yeah. Um, um, Diablo Cody. Diablo Cody, yeah. And another 
and a it was on like NPR and a film reviewer. And Diablo Cody used to be a film reviewer. And she was like giving it up for this guy. She goes, I was a phony. Mm-hmm. You're good at what you do. <laughs> I was just like trying to collect a check before yeah. I got into this other thing. I thought she was a stripper. Maybe that too. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, they always push these stories of like, she's stripped for four days. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still pushing AOC as a waitress. Right, she's like, right. I did it for college for extra money. It <laughs> yeah, wasn't my yeah, career like, goal. It's pretty normal thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, a lot of people work as waiters. Um, um, what was I saying? Diablo Cody. Yeah. And she goes, sometimes. Uh, this is why you can't trust reviews. Sometimes if I gave too many good reviews in a row, um, it's going around the room with my <laughs> reminder to call for the seller. <laughs> it's just like every one of yeah. these. Um, um, she goes, if I gave too many good reviews in a row, I felt some sort of outside pressure without really thinking about it to be like, oh, is this person just loving everything? And then just whatever it was, the next movie I reviewed was going to get a negative review. Right. I was 90 I would have to be the best movie for me to overcome that. Right. And I, I mean, realized at the time I was looking at my I was rating all my um uh Apple whatever songs and if I give too many five stars if it was like a bunch of Led Zeppelin shit that I'd be like I can't keep giving out five stars. It's just something in you. Mm-hmm. So maybe they were like let's give it let's go yeah, a different direction. For sure. Different direction and I was fully willing to concede different direction even though they're like Dice was the biggest comedian on was the planet. Was that the one? Dice Andrew Dice Clay Dice was that was the album. Yeah, and like I've I, I can't I couldn't find it. I was coming in here and I, was I have to, it. No, no, not Dice. I was trying to find the the sales for PDQ Buck just yeah. to see like an idea. And the I, Dice album was so fucking big. I understand not letting it win, <laughs> but it was revolutionary. Yes, like I I heard. Uh, it was a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, somebody was talking to Mitzi, and she, and it was Rusty Dooley. And he goes, "Do you think there'll ever be another Dice?" And she goes, "No." And we're like, why? And she goes, he used all the words. Yeah. It was all like, you can't use his word. He used them all. There's no new word. Now you have to use words in context. Right. But before, it was like, no one was using fuck and shit and cunt. It's just like, no one had yeah, gotten to him. Didn't... And he was like, I'm just going to go for all of them. Mm-hmm. And so he became this thing. It was like, whoa. Like, no holds barred. And that's what, like, that was when he sold out Madison Square Garden. Which, also, it seems normal now. That, that seems was normal, also but not at the thing. time, that was, that was not was, a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. at the time, it's like you just did not. Do Prior comedy. did not do that. No. You know, none of them did that. And Kennison was like no slouch either. And he beat both of them. Wow, yeah. What, and they're like kind of primes. I don't wild. know if, is 1990 Kennison's prime? Probably not. He's probably a little on the way out. Uh, let's see. Same, oh, I, I feel like he probably would have been a little on the way out. But, okay. uh, let's see. Where was his best years? Um. Wild Thing was his list of singles with select, oh, chart. So Wild Thing as a song went to 19, but he might have already been down. Let's see. Okay, television, film. Polly Shore's dead. I am Sam Kinison. Where was the? Where's the one? The walk. Damn, it doesn't say his fucking all his stuff. Like in terms of like, what year did he die? Ninety three. It says here nineteen ninety two. Ninety two. So nineteen ninety, he was. Like when he, he died, already, he, he was, was he, he was he was already done, right? So, by the way, this is just so interesting. I'll talk about inside baseball. If you're not going to like this, you're not going to like this. But it, it's not friends we have. Sam Kinison is probably my favorite comedian, or has been for a long time, and many times. He's the number one guy from going amazing to worthless. Yeah, I mean, he let fame take him so hard. Yeah, and if anyone at home like sees a comic, like why is that guy not so good? He's Fame, it's like fame ruins them. Oh, for it sure. It gives you no hunger. Yeah, I mean, it happens in sports, too. How many guys do you see sign some big contract, and you're like, they're never going to again? Yeah. yeah. That's it. They just get their contract, and that's that's it. But so, Peter Shickley beats them, and you go, okay, maybe they wanted to go a different direction that one year. Then he goes and wins it three more years in a row. And three more years in a row. In a row. Like, he's like, if you go look at the Grammys, you're like, he's, I think, second or third most Grammys. I mean, comedy right. album Grammys. I mean, it was had to be Cosby. No, no, but I'm trying in terms of people. Yeah, who have Cosby won, won like. Yeah, yeah, no, Cosby's right, number yeah. one, and then I think he's tied for second. It could be. Wow, I mean, look at who he's beating. So the first year it's it, Dice for Dice, Kinison for Wild Thing, which I don't know if that was which one that was. That might have been a makeup call. It might not have been. It's so tough. Yeah, eighty eight and ninety two was such a joke. And then the next year. Uh, 
uh, Bob Elliott, Ray Goulding, whatever. Garrison Keillor, yeah. which is like Lake Wobegon shit. That's like yeah. mainstream, whatever. Various artists, the best of Comic Relief, which was a huge thing. Yeah, and Comic Jonathan, Relief in 91. Yeah, like. and Jonathan Winters, who was also huge. He was he was uh, uh, Robin Williams, like uh, whatever. The guy who looked up to him. Emma Bombeck again. Now I got to look up Emma Bombeck. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who Emma Bombeck Who the is. fuck is Emma Bombeck? Uh, oh, she's this old lady. Interesting. Look. She's like, oh, fuck it, yeah. American humorist. For uh, newspaper no. humor. She also published it. All right. Never wow, interesting. Uh, Carlin, Garrison Keillor again, and Jackie Mason. And then 1993, George, he beat George Burns, Rita Rudner, Jonathan Winters again, and Weird Al. And the Weird Al one is crazy because that's the Weird Al album with like the Nirvana cover. That album sold. I looked that up. That thing sold millions that was of huge. copies. That this was guy I remember sold that. Tw- I was 20,000. This probably sold 20,000 copies. Like his albums. And his albums are the same. They're all the same. Like you honestly want, like you listen to all four of them. Sam Kennison the won Live from Hell in 1995. That one he. Wait, how did he win? That must have been after he posthumously. Died. It was released in 1993, a year after his death. The album won Grammy Award for Best Spoken Comedy Album in 1995. Yeah, M- maybe just the however the timing. But no, the, but if it was le- if he, if it was released in '93, how did it win the '95? M- maybe like some sort of like the way it cut gets cut off or whatever. I, I don't know. Maybe it was like you, end of '93 yeah. or something. But then uh, go that look at the Jerky Boys. Oh my god! This is so but funny. go look at after '93. It goes back to being normal. The winners, like all the winners, right. you go okay. These so are all so uh, Sam Kinison when it did beat, they're all gonna laugh at you. Yeah. Um. By by Sandler. Which is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. They're all going. Yeah, for you. but "Live from Hell" from Sam Kinison. Uh, you gotta, you gotta say yeah. that's not a bad. That's not crazy. You know? Not a yeah. crazy choice. So, but these four. Al Franken won. And yeah, Al Franken won one. And now he's fucking bumping us. <laughs> Chris Rock wins two, two in a row. George Carlin gets back in. The Robin Williams gets back in. Okay, it all goes back to normal. Yeah, so it kind of go back goes back to normal. Yeah. But that four years, which also happened to be the same four years that the Buffalo Bills lost the Super Bowl every year. Really? I don't know if that's related. Links. It's not. But. Okay, so that's for you. So who the fuck is this guy? So he lives in Brooklyn. I've been trying to track him down. Really? he's 87 years old. Okay, go look at, if you want to see something crazy, go look at his performance on Carson. Like, if you just want to see what he does. Okay. Because the thing is, is part of his bits are yeah. physical. So why is he winning comedy albums? Dude, I asked. I did my first album, and I I reached out to Dane Cook. Everyone, someone I knew a little bit. Yeah, it's cool. Sometimes you realize like you have access to the top professionals in our field, like, yeah. and really of all time. Yeah, yeah. Not just like yeah, current, yeah. you know. And you can just be like, hey, can I ask you a question about callbacks? It's like, if it's specific <laughs> enough, it won't be like, should I be doing anything different? If it's specific enough, like, ooh, good question. Yeah. And I asked him about albums, like any advice I'm about to do one. He goes, yeah, uh, be aware this is a audio only format. He goes, my first album, I did a 14-minute act out of Godzilla. <laughs> and people are just like, what the fuck? Okay, so you're going to be thinking the same thing because his bits Marissa, are- Marissa, you're going to have some work. you got to put this in. you, you got to put, put this in. Dude, go, in. Go, 23 it, minutes, i got to put some notes. Yeah. Um, go uh, Peter Shickley on Johnny Carson. Okay. Because it's- do it, do it in the video, too. Fuck the demonetization. Just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't even know if you'll get demonetized for- uh, or or, or, or link to it or something. Money, yeah. yeah, it's honestly Peter Shickley. Uh, let's just watch it. Yeah, yeah. Let's I just mean, watch it. So I know. Like, so he does. Know. It's like you're gonna watch this and be like, "How did this beat Dice? And then how did he do it four years in a row doing the exact same thing?" Okay, we're gonna watch this when the as the fans watch it here. You yeah. Sure. I don't know how you do it. Uh, you can just put it. Right. You just rip it and put it up on. Yeah. Yeah. Carson. His only appearance ever on Carson. It's kind of long. It's like nine minutes. I don't even know if we want to watch the whole thing. It's, okay, it's, let's just, sucks. Let's start it. Like it sucks. Before, here we go. Before it's PDQ Buck. I want to be the comments too. You have to listen to this introduction closely. It'll give you some idea of what Mr. Ashikala is about. He is the head of the Department of Musical Pathology. At the University of Southern North Dakota at Hoople. He's an authority on the music of PDQ Bach, who is the 21st of Johann Sebastian Bach's 20 children. Cross is loving Professor it. Peter Schickele. Hey, Schickele, not Schickele. 
cool outfit, by the way. I'm going to be playing a work by PDQ Bach uh, with the orchestra here, but I just, we didn't plan this, but I would like to do something a little different, you know. A lot of people say that the reason I always play with orchestra is because I'm not a very good pianist, and, and if I played alone, everybody would know that. I'd like to play, if I could, I'd just like to play a solo piano piece, a piece that everybody knows. It's Johann Sebastian Bach, the prelude in C major from the Well-Tempered Clavier. This is the best comedian in the world for four years. Wow. I mean, what is it? Just skip skip ahead, because it's like, I'll show you. So he starts doing some, like, wacky gags. So basically, the current gag, for people who don't know, is the band's playing a different he's song. He's playing over him, yeah. Yeah. Now he's standing. Now he's... And then he goes to the couch. Oh, by the end, he's laying down. And he's just doing these kind of weird physical gags. Wow. It's a lottery guy. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's bewildered. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. And he never was asked back. Like he didn't go back really? on. No, that was his only appearance. The audience is bewildered, right? They're just like. And here's the thing: he's like an actual Juilliard trained like musician. He's like an actual composer, right? He's not like he, yeah. He, and he's an he American just, composer, musical educator, and parodist, best known for comedy albums featuring his music, but but which he presents as being composed by the fictional. Um. Was born in okay. Yeah. So. And just like a, some con, not even context, but so Dice was at the stand. Like when I first found out about it, he was like, I was like going all down this rabbit hole. Yeah. And then Dice is at the stand, and he was it was his birthday, and I go to like Joe, the it manager there, and I go, Dice feel and right. I go, hey, can you ask Dice about this? I'm like, I gotta know, because because I was asking, I asked Patrick. Patrick's like, Chris is like, yeah, Patrick knows everything about comedy. I go, Patrick, do you know who Peter Schickle is? He's never heard of him. Nobody's ever heard of this guy, okay, in comedy. Dice, Joe goes, asks Dice, he goes, do you know this dude, Peter Schickler? Like, wh what was it like like losing? He goes, never heard of him. Dice has never heard of him. Dice has never heard, what do you mean he lost to him? It's like, never heard of him. Wow. <laughs> Dice said, he goes, what, you think they were going to give me the Grammy? Like... I mean, they nominated you, though. They did nominate you, but he's... How do you get nominated for a Grammy? Can I, can, I, <laughs> can I nominate myself for Grammy? There is some sort of... So here's another... Because uh, I was like... Part of me was like, man, I want to make a documentary about this guy because it was like so fascinating. Um, so Dice never heard of this guy. Yeah. I wanted. I, I have no way to get a hold of Weird Al, but I'd like to know if Weird Al. Maybe Weird Al would know him just because music. Peter Shickley, five nominations. Yeah, he, that wasn't even the only nominations. Artists in multiple ones. So just to run it down, Cosby had seven. Yep. Goat. Uh, five ones was Carlin and Pryor, and then Dave Chappelle, Peter Shickley, Robin Williams. I, I mean, you've heard of everyone else. Three wins, Chris Rock, Louis C.K., Weird Al. Two wins, Louis Black, Steve Martin. You've heard of all of these all, guys. Not only you've heard of them. They're, they're household names. names. Yeah. Like, this guy probably was, like, like I mean, he, he I don't even know if he would, like, tour. How the fuck did he win? So, okay, so I, I have some more information that potentially, um, so I reached out to this, you know the magazine um, Complex? I've heard of it. Complex is, like, a hip-hop magazine, and then I think, so there's this guy, because I was, like, I started going down, like, figuring out what the voting process is for all this stuff. Yeah. How it works. And so I found an article about the by this guy's name Robert Kenner who lives in New York. I think he started Double XL magazine or Triple okay. X, whatever that hip hop magazine is, Triple XL or something. Uh, and uh, so I I contacted him and because he wrote an article about the Grammy voting process, which then got him kicked out of the Grammy committee because you're not allowed to talk about it. Who was this? His name is Robert J Kenner. Want to hear the coolest thing about talking about stuff beforehand? Yeah, Patrick Milligan. 
Yeah. The booker at the fucking stand. Yeah. One of an all-time great guys. Uh-huh. He used to, he started kind of cringe humor. Yeah, yeah. That magazine? yeah, of course. It was great. And when uh, Last Comic Standing was the big award show, a big show for comedy, mm-hmm. it was a big launching pad. We didn't really have specials a lot. It was yeah. only like HBO a little bit, and they were only doing stars. So anyway, it was Last Comic Standing, and he hated it because they always like focused on like not even like alt comics, just not the mainstream dark comedy you could do because it's NBC. You couldn't right, yeah, be it was real. Main... You couldn't yeah, it was be like, Patrice. Like... You couldn't be Norton on there. Yeah, yeah. And he hated it. Cringe humor hated it. And he got word that it was fixed. And so after they, right before they did their last show, he found out who was advancing and published the list. Really? Yeah. Nice. And he goes, so it's going to be Eliza advancing. She's going to win. And then this and then that and then that. And they'd be like, shut the fuck up. And it was, <laughs> that was the exact order. Yeah. And they're like, what? And it was like, it was pre, it was, there was no, they built it as a contest. But it was completely not, and he yeah. exposed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, most of those, I mean, I will say, any reality show contests are generally bullshit. Like, True. It just, I mean, that's just like, uh, the thing is a lot of people don't realize that. But, we saw it once. But it, comics it, don't realize it either. They go like, oh, I got a shot, and you're like, sorry. Yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> uh, I, I, I saw once they were doing a, a dating show at the outside of this open mic in, in Westwood, and uh, they, the guy it was like two women. He's like, I pick Susan because she's this. And he's like, all right, say goodbye to Margaret. And he's like, bye, Margaret. Sorry, I loved you. You were great, but I picked Susan, whatever. And they're like, okay, cool. Let's try it again while you pick Margaret this time. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, and we'll see what we use later. Yeah. I, I'm like, I mean, Ryan what? was, Ryan uh, Long, who I do a podcast with, he, when we were in Canada, there was this sports show. It was like next, uh, the scores, like next, um, like broadcaster basically and yeah. like if you want it you would go you would get to be like an anchor on, on this oh, network cool. or whatever and our friends were the producers and so they were like hey ryan like you want to just like be in it like you, we just think you'd be good for the show ryan doesn't know anything about sports like nothing <laughs> yeah. he knows nothing about sports and he was just like sure okay and then but the whole thing is this girl one who's now she's like the head of like the nhl network or whatever here and but before it even started they were like yeah she's winning Wow. Yeah. Like it was predetermined. It's so, it's just like, because they wanted to get her on and they go, we're going to get her on via this contest. So, like, we can do the show, still get her on the network. Everybody wins. Yeah. And Ryan came second. Wow. But he had no chance of winning. And if he had won, they would have given him a hamburger. And he <laughs> well, so he, he could have just been does. reading, you know, the, the hockey scores that's or so whatever, great. which he would uh, hate. Uh, ESPN had that same shit looking for the next anchor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I talked to this guy Robert Kenner. I was like, "Hey, so uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to like figure out what's going on with all this like stuff." And so he actually kind of gave a bit of like he's basically Wait, like who's, who's Robert Kenner? Robert Kenner's the guy from the magazine. He was the voter, okay, the okay. Grammy voter. And he goes, "Oh, it's, right, right, right." He goes, "It's kind of bullshit." He goes, "This is what I think happened." He's like, "I've never heard of Peter Shickley either, but what I think happened is that because this guy is the Grammy like committee award, like whatever." is um, it's all musicians, right? So sometimes these really, like, esoteric categories, like best bluegrass, uh-huh. he's like, some, sometimes they might only have 50 people actually cast their votes for them because they don't know. They or, don't know. They don't they know. Just don't they, go, know. They, go, they go, I don't know who the best bluegrass is. So he's like, what I think is happening is Peter Schickler knows all these people from classical music, from his world of classical music, and he just gamed the system and got himself... To win every year because all get his you fr- need is like twenty votes. He's like he's like you might need for something, but I said for comedy, I was like he said that he goes some categories. He's like you can win with twenty votes. I'm like I feel like comedy is not that okay. But here's the deal: like everybody knows who Robin Williams is, right? I, but that's why I always thought that's what they vote. I'm looking at 2010 when I started noticing this: Colbert wins, Kathy Griffin, George Lopez, not in his prime, Patton Oswalt, Spinal Tap, and Weird Al runners up. They're not giving it to anyone. Actually, they're not looking. No, for they're it. they're not. So when yeah, Kinnison yeah. was nominated, it was like, oh, here's a cutting edge new guy. Yeah, you know, when Dice was like, that was his first big album. It was like he wasn't famous yet. This made him famous, right? And so, like, that's why I always use uh, uh, Kinane as my example because he was he had a couple, two, three great albums in a row that were the best. Yeah, Vecchione in 2017 put out whatever everyone said was the best album. I mean, I could look at 2017, 2018. I can guarantee you. Uh, he was not nominated. That's what I'm saying, and so you know, and, and so I guess he it, it, David Cross way way past his prime. Yeah, Amy Schumer live at the Apollo, which is known as one of the whatever. Uh, Margaret Cho way way past her Margaret prime. Cho won what year? Or nominated, nominated. nominated. Yeah, Pat yeah. Oswalt wins. It's just like these are just celebrities, right? 
Yeah, they're just celebrities. But like, I mean, what year was Margaret Cho nominated? She wasn't a celebrity that year. She was a celebrity in like the nineties. I know. I'm saying they yeah, all, yeah, yeah, they yeah. just know her name. They know her name. So right. if they gave it to her when she made her name, yeah. with quality work in the nineties. Right. And they I go, I remember it. her. Margaret Cho in twenty seventeen is like Oh hey, this is like a make you're just you're not looking at these albums. You're not listening to You're them not listening to them. No, no, you're no. You're just going, I know that name. Right. I wonder if it is like they don't have to weigh in. So it's like I'm definitely gonna weigh in on best like pop album. Yeah. I'm definitely gonna weigh in on best R and B album. Yeah. But like best classical, I might be like, if I'm a voter, I'm like, hey, I don't know anything about classical. I'm skipping that. Yeah. I'm just not gonna vote. But I mean, like, this guy's like friends with Philip Glass and stuff. Like, Philip Glass doesn't know what the best pop album is if he's a voter or whatever. Like, you know, these the people who are like these classical music nerds. They're not following who's the best pop album either. I just maybe there's so many people voting. But so anyway, that was this guy's theory was he's like he just figured out a way to game the system. But then I'm like, you did it four years in a row. Four years in a row. Not just the one. Like if you were going to try and do this, you would do it once. You would do it once. And also, right, it's (laughs) you got to give it up for him. I I, I remember when when Aziz started making it and everyone, all these losers at the comedy store which were my friends, and I was one too. Sure. They were like mad at Aziz because he sold three pitches to, I think, either Judd Apatow's company or something. Three movies. Yeah. And they're like, what the fuck? They didn't They didn't respect him at the time. He was an up-and-comer. Is this before Human Giant? Yes. Okay. I think, or right then. Because Human Giant was hilarious. Human Giant was hilarious. Yeah. Absolutely. And people were shitting on him. Like, they shot on anybody famous that wasn't in their core group of friends. Yeah. Um, and they're like, what the fuck? And then it hit a lot of us. Like, you know, he wrote three movies. Mm-hmm. You've had an idea for one that you never even wrote an outline for. Yeah. So what are you really mad at him? You got to give it for Peter Shickley. He made four albums in he a row. He did make four albums in a row. But again, they're like, they're the same. It's just a song. It's with it's the him gag. just like as a conductor at an orchestra. A lot of it's like physical bits, like his thingy doesn't work. It like breaks right. or what like or like or like, you know, yeah, and like they're he's like they're not following him. And then sometimes there's like a funny noise when it's supposed to be like classical and like you're not even listening it's not you listen to it and everybody's laughing right it's it's so bizarre and so i guess he just game the system four years in a row to the point of winning and i wanted like so if you go on his website i think i know where he lives but i don't want to go and i've emailed him i've emailed his son his manager really i want to talk to him he's 87 yeah. years old he's going to die He's gonna die. Yeah, you want to know and, what the fucking and like, detail was. Yeah, just like, just talk about it. I mean, if you does go anyone to, know Shickley? Can you help? Nobody's fucking Danny ever get in touch heard of him? him. Nobody's heard of him. But maybe he goes to somebody's synagogue. Maybe <laughs> you know? no, I don't, like, he's, I don't think he's. I don't think he's Jewish. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. All okay, right, you want? You got any dates? You touring? Uh, wait, wait. the only date I have coming wait, 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 up wait, wait, is wait. I'm at the okay, do- dojo of, of comedy. Sam Tripoli's place. Yeah, Sam Tripoli. Nice. Yeah, East on April 22nd. I'm going to be there. It's dojo of comedy East on April 22nd. Get yeah, tickets at uh their website. Their oh, website, the yeah, Comedy website. Dojo. Okay, nice. Yeah, I currently don't have a website. Really? I had one, and then I was like, "It seems like somewhat of an outdated." I have like it's a link tree. It's for dates, but I'm like, "It's you, you know, like if you go to my Instagram on the bio, it's still it's also just for there. dates. There's something yeah, new yeah. to be on there. It's just like, let me see where it's, where he's touring." Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm sure I'll fire up a website again. Yeah, and a bio. Yeah. All right, Kami Dojo. I'll be all over Europe, all through Europe. I got. Let's see if I remember it all. On the 26th, it starts of April. Glasgow, London, the 27th. Manchester, the 29th. Uh, Amsterdam. This is all in May now. Amsterdam. Stockholm, Vienna, Berlin, Ljubljana, uh, two Australia? cities in Romania, Club Nukarest, Blucher, whatever, and Bucharest, and then finishing in Athens, Greece. I do weird that's stuff. A, dude, that's awesome. It's a pretty fun that's one. A, they wanted to send me all over UK. Dude, like, that's nah. a sick tour. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, on May 17th, get go to my website um, You know, for tickets. It's, uh, it's right there. There'll be a link at the bottom of this YouTube page or the Spotify page. Let's get back to the episode. So I found, uh, if you go to his website, he has like a merch store, which I can't imagine a lot of people buying Peter Shickley merch, but the address for his like merch is near the Barclays Center. So I was like, at one point, I was like, should I just go like wait out there? But I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that. Shickley.com. Yeah, Shickley.com. Go at cost like a- S-C-H-I-C-K-E-L-E. Yeah. Yep. That is, is. That is him. Some wacky stuff. And you're like, Store. if you go, like, if you go look at his Twitter, his like, website's yeah. so much smoother than my website. <laughs> if you go look at it as a Twitter account, like, the I would say the oddest thing, and part of it is that he doesn't really acknowledge the Grammy wins. Like, if you go pull up his his uh, Twitter profile, yeah, it doesn't. 
He doesn't say four-time Grammy winner. or I think he's a five-time Grammy winner, actually, because he won for a kid's album. Oh, right, not for Best Comedy. Not for he Best Comedy. Shirley Peter. The official Twitter account. Okay, okay, okay. When's the last one? November 28th. This is the last day of Shigley yeah. Emporium's holiday shopping spree. Yeah. Shopping. Thanks for the birthday wishes. Oh, July 17th, 2022. Yeah. 87 years old. Mm-hmm. But look, see, official Twitter account of Peter Shikolo, composer, musical satirist, radio host, purveyor of violin. You think he'd be like four, Grammy five time Grammy winner? No, like I, there's an element where I go, are you like, are you embarrassed or ashamed or like, you just, you, you know, you got away with this and now you don't really want to like thumb it in people's noses. I don't know, but it is fucking bizarre. Yeah. It's the bizarre thing is like I and when I started like going down this I I all I wanted to do is ask five people comics who knew comedy. Ago, Dice you, had never heard of him. He lost to him. Dice never heard of him. You know Lahai Fambula the Bushman? No. He used to go to Venice Boulevard dressed like an I mean like when I say like an African what you're thinking? Yeah yeah, yeah. like the paint with a spear. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And just go I am and he had that accent. I don't know where he's from. I'm the Bushman. His claim to fame was he beat Norm Macdonald in Star Search. Really? Yeah. Wow. And it was the two of them heads up. Starts it. Now he was a local comedy store, like crazy, but mm-hmm. they abused all the time. And yeah, yeah, took yeah. Up in his need for fame. But and then eventually Norm died right before him. Really? Yeah, he also beat him in life. <laughs> <laughs> beat him in life. <laughs> yeah. Always runner um, up. Yeah. I wonder who, the, like. But like nobody knows who he is. I've met so far, I believe. But Lahai was still going, I won Star Search. Yeah. It's a, it's a fucking thing. Yeah. This guy goes like, oh, I'm just a composer. Like, he doesn't really reference it at all. At all. Doesn't tweet a lot. He doesn't tweet a lot. No, he, I mean, he's 87 years old. Like, I don't even know if he manages his Twitter account. But, like, I've, I've tried to get a hold of him. But part of the thing, too, is, like, I want to talk to him. But I also don't want to be like, so how the fuck did you do this? And he's like, what? Like, I was the best comedian in the world. Like, I don't want to be, like, offensive. Like, where he thinks I'm, you know? Like, I don't know what degree. I can't. Imagine that he thinks he was the best comedian in the world. Yeah, he did an AMA. Not a Twitter thing, but hopefully you can be forgiven for folks my age. That means ask me anything. Oh, tweet your questions. It wasn't yeah, Reddit. Yeah, yeah, tweet your questions. That means ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. And like, I don't, I'm, I was like, I'm totally just like at a dead end. Uh, with he, this he knows other... music for sure. Happy birthday, Earl Scruggs. Been a fan of Foggy Mountain Boys forever. Oh, no, no, no. He's, that, that's what he is. He is like a Juilliard trained, like I saw some stuff where he's like, I'm going, he's friends I'm going with to see Phil... Itzhak Perlman in, in, uh, on a Q&A. Yeah, and he's friends with Philip Glass. Like he's, in terms of music, he's well known in the music side. I'm just like, how the fuck did he figure out? And how why couldn't he win this? Grammys in music? So when the I remember when I put my album out, it was 2010 or 11, and it went to back when there was a big thing went to number one on iTunes, and it was a big like selling point for my agent to be like it went yeah. to number one on iTunes. And then you look at it later, and then immediately drops down like after a few days, mm-hmm. drops down, and then Jim Gaffigan takes up one through four again. Right. <laughs> um, and to to become number one on iTunes, you had to sell like. 1100 copies Mm -hmm. and like a total the total run was 5000 total yeah and so if you just get a few right away you go up to number one it's to sell number one it's like almost nothing but people like what are you a billionaire now of course course. yeah yeah, people have no idea i made 7200 bucks yeah um (laughs) and maybe it's this maybe he just needed a few votes and that's it and everyone else is split but but nobody for four years was like what is going on no comics were like who is this so you know how during elections they'll be like oh that guy's the incumbent i guess i'll vote for him sure i've heard his name do you think that after year two and three people like oh this guy's good he won last year but so i'll vote for him he was up against like real people he beat george carlin i just gotta go keep going back to this list he beat george carlin he beat, he beat George fucking he beat, Carlin. And like that album, the... And that's when comedy was... It's in a renaissance now, but... That was beat, like... He beat Dice and Kinnison for Wild Thing. Jackie Mason, like whatever. Jackie Mason was probably, you know, not exactly in his prime then, but... Garrison Keillor, Jonathan Winters, various artists, comic relief. But like that fourth one when he beats Weird Carlin, Al... Carlin, Parental Advisory, that's a big one. <laughs> it's Garrison really Keillor, crazy. Garrison Jackie Mason, brand new, 1992. That was... Uh, George Burns... Like I can't imagine Peter Runner, Jonathan Winters, Weird Al, Off the Deep End. That Off the Deep End album was humongous. That's multi. That is a platinum album. Like in just albums, that was a multi platinum album. Wow. Like this guy is. I'm telling you, you're talking sales of like ten thousand albums. 
I think Lie from Hell was Kinnison's best one. I think that's the one yeah. that it was. Wow. But, like, it just doesn't... It doesn't make any sense. And, like, it, I, I w- could have almost let it go a little more if after those four years they were, like, it was all wacky people. Now, but right, they right, went right. back to it being normal. Yeah. It's so weird these days. <laughs> yeah, it's weird we now. Chappelle's back with the closer. Yeah, I mean, it's CK, not that weird now, runner-up for Sorry, Gaffigan, Patton Oswalt. And uh, Randy Rainbow. Randy Rainbow. Wow. That's yeah, but that's like not insane. But that's like, imagine Randy Rainbow won four years in a row. Yeah. The year before, Louis like... C.K. won for Sincerely. <laughs> and Nate got a nomination. Lavelle Crawford, Chelsea Handler, Louis Black. Chelsea Handler in 2022. What? Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they love giving to people who aren't full-time comics anymore, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Just, it's uh, just like, are they just makeup calls? The Oscars are the same way. They're yeah. like, oh shit, we never gave one to him. Let's just give it to somebody for their oh, for sure. performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is fun, you know, whatever. 2021, Tiffany Haddish beats Bill Burr's Paper Tiger, <laughs> Jim Gaffigan. Tiffany Haddish won? Tiffany Haddish won in 2021, Black Mitzvah, and Jerry Seinfeld in 2021. Jerry Seinfeld ever win one? Does he have a win? Let's see. CK, 2016, Live at Madison Square Garden, Chappelle... Kathy Griffin wins in 2014. <laughs> Some of these are so fucking retarded. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon wins. Um, I don't think. I don't think. I don't see a Seinfeld. Let's see how far back do we have to go um, pre I, he, pre 2000. He right? would have won after 90. I don't know. Yeah, let's see. Jonathan Winters. I don't. I don't Carlin. Did he have an album before? I'm telling you for the last time. Nothing. He didn't win. Did he ever have an album though? Oh right, he might have uploaded his albums. Yeah, because wasn't I telling you for the last time, like, his first thing? Really? I don't know. I, like, I, I mean, he was the most famous guy in the world, but... He was, but he but, was known for, as a fucking comedian. As a comedian, but yeah. I'm like, I don't know if he ever had... We gotta get to fucking Shickley. Shickala. Shickala. I mean, he lives around here. He lives within three miles of us. But I just don't know how to get to him. But I don't know how, how to approach him. How did he do him. it? How did he do it? Like, do you think he'd want to not... Well, th- this Robert Kenner guy, his idea is no, no well, okay. at the same time. His his idea was that he's like he knows all these people because he's a composer. Yeah, that he knew enough people that they could game the system. There was a there was a there was a um. So now they do now everything's just biased. Now everything's yeah. like give me money and I'll put you at, at our most you know like mm-hmm. Rotten Tomatoes was this like crowdsourced thing, which is, is a conglomerate of reviewers and. And humans, mm-hmm. just conglomerates, you know. Yeah. And uh, an amalgamator, and then they sold to like 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 moviephone.com, and then it became like, no, if you pay us, we'll right, we'll right, we'll, we'll push it. Which is why you always see when some like super shitty movie comes out, and there's like hundred percent critic score, yeah. and, like zero percent. Yeah. And all the um, all the reviews are the same way. So like they wanted to hate Chappelle, so it's like zero percent, like zero. Chappelle was yeah. The yeah. one joke, but what about the other joke? What about <laughs> shooting a guy off your lawn with your shotgun or yeah, something like that? Like, like nope, they can't. Not all zero, and and then you'll see it too, where it's like my last special was like they like and a lot of these things was like not even the honorable mention. They would go down an honorable mention for like a five minute set on like a late night show, and mine doesn't get whatever. Crazy. And you're like, it's fine, whatever. But it's like. Uh, they're all voting for who they think they should be voting for. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they've they've discre- slowly all have discredited themselves. themselves like, yeah. when the Oscars was like, you know, there was like the Oscars too white stuff, and then they go, okay, well, then we're just going to nominate, oh, and, and, like, more people of color. And then, essentially, they're saying, so all the old votes that we cast, that was bullshit. Right. Right? Those were all bullshit because clearly those weren't the best actors. We were racist. We were just racist, <laughs> right? Those weren't the best, and so then nothing. There's no, there's, there's no such thing as the best actor, which is fine. It's art, right? It's art. It's it is subjective, and you know. But you know, this is just like this is nuts. thumbing it in their face. I mean, who is this guy? <laughs> I'm so interested in like, what did he do to get? This? Was it Why? a very What's... few amount of votes? Was it like the the iTunes thing where it's like it's actually very little? So to cook it. Like they say, like if the people who fix games. Yeah. Like all you need is for one good player to be like miss a couple free throws. Yeah. And the percentage chance you might still win. Yeah. But if you miss a couple free throws, our percentage of what we'll know goes from fifty percent to fifty six percent. And if we can sure. do that, especially over time, if you're trying to just like cover a spread, we'll win too. massively. Yeah. You know. Um. But I I don't know what his like, like I don't get what his motivation is for this because it's not like he was going on tours. I mean, right? Now he's going on tours. So he wasn't cashing in on this. Like he didn't go on these. I'm tours. sure it helped him sell some records. 
I honestly so did it help him get work as a as a like, professor. <laughs> I don't know. Like if you go look, you'll find like the odd like you know like I, I went and searched and he he would do these events like the odd music musical performances, but sometimes they weren't the PDQ box. Sometimes it was just his music. Really, like as an actual composer. Was any of it funny? No. Be real. No. no. I, I mean, like not just dated. It's hard. It's dated. It's dated, but like, uh, and again, I'm not into classical music, like, other than, I'm not into it like that, yeah. so maybe I don't get it, it's way over my head. I saw one, it was, it was, it was, oh, what's his name? I forget. And he was that kind of guy. Yeah. And he goes, I'm going to do speed reading with piano, and he's like, let me show you, and he opens up a book to, like, the, the, the piano book to a certain page, and then he goes, and changes the, changes the page, and changes the page, just keeps like, and it's like, yeah. okay, funny joke, I get it. Yeah. I get it. You were pretending to be, like, Bach, and then it's sure. a joke. But, like, if you listen to the the albums, yeah, uh, you do hear the odd laugh, but they're not often. Right. And the PDQ. four albums are, like, the same. The albums are PDQ Bach, uh, colon, 1712 Overture and Other Musical Assaults, Next year, 91, PDQ Bach, Oedipus Tex, and other choral calamities. These are like goofy. This yeah. is like goofy, like like um, 101 uh, uh, dirty jokes. Yeah. Kind of things. Like exactly. Corny. Yeah. Uh, uh, PDQ Bach, WTWP, Classical Talkity Talk Radio. Uh, and the final one, PDQ Bach, Music for an Awful Lot of Winds and Percussions. But like, I mean, he was just cranking these things out. Like... Peter Schickley, 1997, he was nominated again. Yeah. A definitive biography of P.D.Q. Buck. Maybe, I mean, it's- So, it, and that it's, was, yeah, that was a weird one. He somehow, but he lost that one, right? He lost that one to Al Franken. To Al Franken. To Rush Limbaugh as a big- So, I guess the people were like, part of me was like, did he have some fucking dirt on some people? Like, was he, you know, was Epstein's, yeah, Epstein's situation? Maybe. I was, on, I was a is... house player for the for the, for the <laughs> island. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw. He goes, I, I took movie. notes. I took notes, yeah. Like, it's it's honestly borders on conspiracy territory. It's conspiracy. What the- f- And there's what... no comedy conspiracies. This is the only one. What do we think happened? I don't know. But I, I like, if I even had the chance to speak with him, I don't know how I'd approach how him. Would you, yeah, because how would... I don't know if he takes himself seriously where he'd be like, what do you mean? I saw a guy like on... if I go, how did you rig this? And he goes, what do you mean rig this? Rig, yeah, rig, <laughs> yeah he's like, I'm the best. Yeah, what if there's no conspiracy? Like, I remember they, they was like way into classical at the time, and I was doing spoofs of classical. It was just like that was the thing. I would never believe. I heard that. an NPR type podcast. I call them NPR, but it's also the Daily. Yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, all that genre. Super left wing, well produced. Yeah. You know, um, and it was about um, tr- the truly t- tasteless joke book. Um. Uh- and they made like three or four of them. And it was this lady wrote them, 101 Truly Tasteless Jokes. Yeah. And it was a lot of Polak jokes. It was a lot of like some like rape or jokes or whatever and some some race jokes. And it was like, how dare, now it's like you have to go back and apologize for this. He goes, why? No, they were just goofy ones for kids. And yeah. like it furthered the, the cause of racism. <laughs> She's like, guys, fuck off. It was just like, it was just goofy. Yeah, it was like for you to read when you're taking and a shit. And then after she got enough abuse for it, she, they like addendum. She has now apologized. She realized oh, she, it was she... wrong to whatever. And it's like, I don't know, you get a thousand people telling you're an asshole eventually. Like, am I? I guess I am. Oh, yeah. But I mean, retroactively. But I wonder if he is like, it was just a time and place thing, the way 101 Truly Tasteless Jokes was. That's why it caught on. Yeah. Or, or if it was, it's like, here's why. You remember the people who first bought views on YouTube? Mm-hmm. And brilliant. Yeah. You're like, what? And it just became, it made you feel, it made those people feel real and yeah. big. Yeah, 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 for sure, because people weren't able to. And like... then once once you got big, you could stop buying the buying the, the views. Right. And it's like, they think I'm huge now. Yeah, and and uh, people didn't really like I wonder know if the difference. One of, one of these where he gamed it, or it was just like, they were just into classical at the time, and I was doing a spoof of classical. Again, I would concede that they were into classical one year. Right. Not for four straight, that's ha- almost half a decade. Even if it's not, if you're like, there, he was like, there was no conspiracy. They just, I think they just voted on that they, I won the year before, so that they thought I must have been big. Right, four but years. But it's or, like dice also, is like you a phenomenon. Be like, I'm not voting for that guy again. We voted for him three years in a row, you guys. At some point, this has got to stop. Or like, the we- okay, the Weird Al album. That was one of the biggest albums, like, not even comedy. Yeah. That was just one of the biggest albums that year for anything. That was probably as big as whatever, you know, Metallica album came out in 93. I'm sure it was like, you know, doing similar sales to that. Yeah. Or whatever. Like, it just, it... it, it... Four-time winner. He did win three times, Weird Al. Weird Al won three times, yeah, yeah. 
But Peter Schiffer won as fuck? many as Robin Williams. Yeah. And again, everybody knows in comedy who Robin Williams is, understandably. Nobody knows who Peter Schickley is. Damn. Nobody. I, I've met one or two people so far who have ever heard of him. And this is like the industry we're in. It's the, right. That's the thing. This is the industry we're in. Sometimes people go like, I've never heard of that guy. Like, people you haven't heard of like, yeah, but it's my industry. Yes. And sometimes I'm not like stopping. they're a New York comic. That's, that's my world. I know open micers. Yes. So for me to not have heard of a guy who got this HBO special is like, that's weird. Four times in a row. And again, like all the people who are like these comedy nerds, still most of them are like never even. And part of me was like, well, I'm uh, maybe like I was a little too young at the time, even though I know everybody else. Right. Like I know everybody else. I know all those guys in the 80s. I know all those albums for the most part. Cosby, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Weird Al for Eat It. That was a big one. That was a big one. That was big. 85. So he was already big. It wasn't like they were like, we didn't know who he was yet. No. <laughs> And nobody knows who this guy is. It wow. drives me fucking nuts. I mean, I want to know, does he teach classes and stuff? He, I think, no, I I think he, no, 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 I don't think he was a professor, but he was a, he was like a legitimate composer. Like, I think in the classical uh, music world, he is considered like a, you know, a, a good composer. Can I read his AMA? Yeah, please. Okay, so. I'd love to know if I... Got a question about music. For the next half hour or so, I'm doing what my daughter says is an AMA. For folks my age, that means ask me anything. Let's go to the bottom. When are you bring? Oh, here's one. Sue Iverson right from the start. When are you bringing PDQ back to Minnesota? There are some young minds that I need to expand. Uh, didn't respond to that. <laughs> a couple questions. Where do you draw your inspiration? Will you be performing live anytime soon? My mom and I would love to see you. No response. What do you think is the Mozart of today in terms of impact and changing music? Can anyone what did he respond to? Did he Ask respond? me anything. He didn't respond to any of these things. <laughs> um, okay, before. just a thank you. He, here's what he responded. Just a thanks for your music both being in my life and a frequent topic of conversation. Long live the trombone. He responds, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. That's it. John Ferranti is such a good, okay, something about John Ferranti. And he goes, I was definitely thinking of his voice. He was one of a kind, John Ferranti, tremendous singer. Have you ever performed in a Santa costume? Nope, but the resemblance is undeniable. Actually, you know what? Now that you... So I did go through that, and I there was um, a guy in... So is there someone, like a blue checkmark guy? Who in, responded to him? Who responded to him or something? Because I spoke with him. He ended up... <gasps> really? Following me. He's uh, an animator on The Simpsons. Whoa. Yeah, this dude, and I spoke with him, and I was asking him about it, and he's like, I was really into, cla I'm really into classical music. Um, hold on, let me see if I can find this in my Twitter DMs, if they can be searched this way. This is wild. It's nuts that he could win this. It's insane. It's, uh... I wonder if Louis knows him. Louis's way into the Grammys. You think Louis would know him? I possibly. David Silverman. So this guy, David Silverman, I spoke with Name him. Name checks out. <laughs> he is uh he is the uh he directed the silver the simpsons movie he basically has been a animator on the simpsons since uh 1987 since it started and i spoke with i had a whole thing with him and uh it's funny because he sent me you know the because i was talking about the grammys and then he remember the when homer wins the grammy and he For goes what? And there's the scene in The Simpsons where Homer gets the wins a Grammy for when they copied the Beatles, you know, the Beatles rooftop thing or whatever. Oh, yeah. And then he gives it to him, the um, the bellhop, or it's like a tip. He gives him the Grammy. He goes, oh, it's just a Grammy. He throws it out. And then the guy who animated that thing sent me that clip when I'm talking to him about the Grammys or whatever. Whoa. But uh, yeah, it's like he was even, he, he just goes, uh, the Grammys have a history of questionable choices, but he couldn't explain why four. Because, yeah. again, I'm willing to give him one or two. Even if it was, he was just a well-known actor, so they didn't know any better. Yep. So they thought, oh, this must be, like, a lot of times you'll have a guy who comes into comedy in the other way. Mm -hmm. Didn't, like, start as a comedian and then get bigger, but, like, started comedy, actually didn't. Like, like Judd Apatow was a comic for a few years. Uh, um, uh, what's his name from Curb? Uh, Garland? No, the other one. Uh, Main one. Jimmy Smith? Oh, Larry David? Larry David. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and they kind of stopped. And so yeah. it's like, all right, but they got this big stuff from comedy to begin with. Right. Some guys like, I'm just an actor, and, and then I started comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Tom Brady. Um, <laughs> um, and so maybe if it was like that, I could see like, 
oh, we didn't know. We assumed he was a good comic yeah. because he's huge. Yeah. But it wasn't that. And he didn't tour. It's one not... appearance on Carson. Which one appearance on Carson. Was an overrated thing. Yeah. So what's, what's uh, uh, who's the wild and crazy guy? Uh, Steve Martin? Steve Martin. Yeah. He goes, they say you do an appearance on Carson and you were huge. He goes, it's not. It's 11 appearances. Yeah, 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 yeah. He goes, you get recognized for a few days, but but after repeated ones. Repeated ones. So this guy did one. Did it one. It wasn't enough to make him a superstar. And he like kind of like bombed. Like, kind of bombed. He was yeah. even apologized to the fans. <laughs> Carson. Yeah, like he kind of bombed on Carson. Didn't get asked back. Didn't do anything else. Didn't tour based off of his like you imagine if you're winning Grammys that's you could maybe tour off of it. Yeah. Okay, come on up in it. Maybe you want to. I mean, boop, 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 boop. there you go. You know, so so nothing like that. Wow. It yeah. It really. So this guy, this animator, was like, he had no explanation. He because he so he had heard of him because he I saw him reply to a tweet of Peter Schickler's. That's how, I, and then I clicked on his profile because he was like a blue check. This yeah. is before Elon took over, where they actually like meant something, and then like where like it was a notable person. You know what Early I mean? Early on, it was like, well, how'd you get that? Well, not even no, no. no. This is like f- I don't oh. know, four months ago or six months ago or something. What is it now? Does anyone who buys it? Yeah, so like any now everybody has them. So sometimes you'll see and you're like, oh, it's like a guy who has four followers, but he's just yeah. Has it used Twitter to mean blue. celebrity. Now it means this definitely or is or like me. something interesting. Where now it's just nothing. But anyway, so I click on him and he followed me. So I go, oh, weird. So then I he had already followed. He you? was already following me. Oh, so I go, oh, perfect. this is interesting. So perfect. I could talk to him, and he's just like, I don't know. He's like, it was funny. Like he's like, but again, I'm I was super into classical music. Wow. Yeah, like he's like, I'm I'm a crazy like classical music nerd. But like that is as niche as it gets. Not only are you in classical music, but you're in the classical music satire. Wow. Yeah, and like, yeah, he didn't satire. tour off of this. Like, I don't think you have to be way into classical. Yeah, like I don't think he's like you know, I don't think he would go sell out uh, a theater right now if he wanted to. Be old people. I I opened for Shelley Berman once. It was at a. Um, no. He won in. Oh, it's a dude. It's a dude. He won in like he did a few episodes of Curb actually. Shelley. He was a '60s comic. Okay. Oh, that's Alan Sherman. Um, maybe Shelley Berman did not win. Oh nope, 1960. Inside Shelley Berman. It was split. There was a musical comedy section and a spoken comedy section so, and in 1960. That would make sense if, if Schickler won for the musical comedy section, but they- Not even, by- though, because Weird Al was right there. Right. Yeah, it doesn't-, it doesn't But doesn't I opened for him, and it was all old people, no one under 65. Yeah. And it was just a it was a fundraiser or whatever. They were yelling out, um, they were yelling out requests. They're like, do the radio one. He goes, the, oh my God, I haven't done that in 40 years. All right, let me think about it for a second. And he was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> I've never heard of him. But it was they were so in. These old Jews were so in. Yeah. I wonder if he'd do good business. Like, my mom was way into you. Sure. Like, maybe. But, but how Gramercy? would they even... No, because the, I, I guess, like, if you're even into him, yeah. how would you find out? How would you find out? That he's playing. Yeah. Like, I, I, I don't know. It, it is... Is one of the most bizarre things that I've I've come across in in a while. Just for the fact that nobody knows who he is. Nobody knows like you probably have access is. to a lot more like uh, comedians than I do. And I can't like, believe Dice didn't know that he lost to him. He didn't know. Never heard. The only one. Oh, I oh. Norm, we asked him once. Was aware that Lahai Fenbula the Bushman beat him on Star Search. There you go. He's like, do you know Lahai? He's like, Ugh, yeah, the guy fucking beat me on. Like he yeah. never forgot that. Right. And you would think when you're Andrew Dice Clay. Biggest comedian in the world, your biggest, biggest album. album ever did not win. Who did it lose to? Yeah, at the Grammys when the Grammys in 1990 was like, it was the second biggest thing to the Oscars. It was a clip of. Uh, it was the second biggest award show to the Oscars. Yeah, right. Like, and the right. think how big the Oscars were in 1990. Like now we kind of like joke about it, or like whatever it's bullshit, but like big deal. It was a big deal. It's so ridiculous. And the Grammys man. were a really big deal. So you'd think Dice would be aware of who he lost to because they didn't have specials back. It was just like. It's it's got to be an album, yeah. Wow, yeah. who the fuck is Peter Schickler? I know. And if you're watching, maybe if his son watches this or something, get a hold of us because we want to talk to him. I mean, Eddie Murphy. It's just crazy. <laughs> it's so fucked. <laughs> it is really uh the list of people he beat is just what it's Weird Al, Jonathan Winters, Rita Rudner, George Burns, Jackie Mason, Garrison Keillor, George Carlin, Emma Bombeck, Jonathan Winters. Comic Relief, Garrison Keillor, I don't know Bob and Elliot and Ray Golding. 
Yeah, I don't know who they Best are. Best of Bob and Ray. Sam Kinison, Dice, Emma Bombeck, Sandra Bernhard. Jesus. Yeah, like, I mean, whatever. There's a few we, we don't know, but for the most part, those but are to like... win. Like, I get even, like... Somehow, you probably were like the 15th best. They, they launched you up to fifth, and you got a nomination. Yeah. Like, if you game the system to get nominated. Right. Sure. To win. <laughs> like, <laughs> to win four times in a row is, at that point, you're like- Who ha- votes for the Grammys? I want to fucking get a nomination for my special. I, who who the fuck works there? Tell me how many how many people have to buy out. I'll just buy you out. I I'll mean, buy we, you well, that's the thing. It's, it's, a, se- it's a secret- It's uh, a secret organization. That's why this guy, Robert, got kicked out, because he yeah. said- he, he, he came out and <laughs> yeah right yeah, yeah. some cutters <laughs> but so he came and that's the thing so this robert Kerr guy came out and said i'm a voter this is the process it's kind of bullshit and they gave him the boot they're like you can't yeah. you can't talk first about rule, it first rule of grammy nominations is don't there talk are no grammy nominations yeah. <laughs> there's no talking, <laughs> there's about, talking it. about it and i think since uh like the grammys has recently started to get boycotted because like drake and like the weekend are like this is bullshit we're not we're not why they participating i think so like because they probably also do shakedowns now, where it's like sponsor us and we'll give you a higher number. I mean, if you're Drake, you're doing the Grammys a favor by showing up. It is not vice versa. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was like that. Yeah, people are like we got to buy tickets for our friends. Yeah, like you're like, like fuck, fuck, fuck you. Yeah, so I, and I think they're they've made it a little more um, like open, and I think there it was there was a race element to it as well. That, that's why they were boycotting. Like there was all this stuff, right? All all the things, but uh, I oh, think right. they've maybe. I don't know if it's transparent, but maybe it's a little more transparent now. Dude, these lists of nominations, you go back and listen to it. It's just like everyone way so far past their prime getting nominated. I'm not going to say names, but <laughs> yeah. like these are people that were like their heyday was 15 years ago. Yeah. And they're just getting nominated now. But it's, at least they're known. They're known. It. I mean... <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, and that's the thing. I uh, that's why I know. Ellen DeGeneres in 2020. <laughs> fuck off! Really? Get the fuck out of here! What? For the fucking special that all her dumb fucking suck up friends uh, right. okayed and said yeah, this yeah. is really good. Her yeah. Netflix thing, 2020. Right, right. I forgot about that. But at least, like, it probably even if you hate it and it, you're like, this sucks. You heard probably, of Ellen DeGeneres? As you a heard comic. of Ellen DeGeneres? It probably did crazy numbers. I, it's just make. It's just like she's she's rich. And, she's she's like rich famous, and famous. It must be that. But like she is rich and famous, and she's like a f- gay wad. She's a big gay wad. Yeah, like. Oh my god, these are really funny. I'm not gonna say this, <laughs> but like, it's just so funny how it's like, <laughs> it's not even like I know that guy. He's like, no, you know him back then. Yeah, it, it's like saying like you ever see like it's like an athlete when they're way past their prime. Mm-hmm. Mike Schmidt was his player for the Phillies. Yeah, Hall of Famer. And his last year, he retired in the middle of the year because he's hitting like 207. Yeah. And he was and like, was like I, I can't do this anymore. A-Rod basically did that. By the end, yeah. yeah by and the if end you're like, the Yankees, A-Rod's like- But A-Rod, the UFC has that too. It's like, oh, that guy's good. He's like, no, that guy was good. Look at his stat. He's lost six out of seven. Yeah. You know? And it's- But they still know, have the name. I mean, the, like one of the, not not to derail, but one of the craziest retirements ever is Big Poppy, Because he's straight up just like hit 40 home runs, batted 300, and then 110 left. RBIs, and goes, I'm done. Barry Sanders was big like that. Yeah, but Barry Sanders but he was he's like I don't dispute. Yeah, he like, and he he's also like me. my my body is like gonna get destroyed. He's like I'm never going to the playoffs. You guys are no team, so trade me or I'm done. They yeah. called his bluff, and he goes, Yeah, I really. Yeah, I made Calvin enough. Johnson was similar, top of the game, but football is I ground. guess a little different because it because like it, do it, I want to walk again? Do I want to walk? Yeah. yeah. Whereas Big Poppy was like, you could be playing right now. I mean, the amount of, I'll never meet her, so this is fine, but the amount of nominations that Kathy fucking Griffin has <laughs> is retarded. But, okay, I agree with that, but, like, at least Kathy Griffin, if she wants to go on a theater tour, will sell it out in she five sell, minutes. That's a good point. She is at least a working comedian. Yes. Same with a lot of these people, even past their prime. Yes. They are working. Yes. So it's like, I can see their error where it's like, well, that's a big comic, right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, no, it is a big comic. Yeah, they're like just she, not, they're not like she did five million dollars in ticket sales last year, ten million dollars in ticket sales. Like, and, and right? Did a run of theaters and sold them out. And you go, okay, maybe not for me, but this is for somebody. This guy is just like he wasn't touring. Like I've tried to find like tours of his. She was nominated five years in a row and then won the sixth. Kathy Griffin. Yeah, she's like the anti Shikla, but she won. They finally gave it to her like that. What, like that. What year? 2014 calm down girl mm. all right 
That's I mean, you know, a... she was on the CNN like New Year's thing every year. She was proper famous. I mean, she put out a new hour every year, and it was Grammy nomination worthy. <laughs> yeah, like for six years in a row. That's that is pretty insane. She's the, the most, the best, <laughs> most prolific, and that will like what you're saying goes closer to like the Grammys are bullshit, which again, I, yeah, I do concede. But at least like you, you can understand why Kathy Griffin. Right, right, but right, right, right. Let's get she back to it. Because Peter the... Schickela, you can't even wrap your head around for the once. No. Like, it didn't make sense one time, let alone When four. he went on Carson, it wasn't like he he was a big thing. Even, you ever see the Kinison on Letterman? Uh, no, no. So Kinison got a couple spots because the booker, who was the comedian, saw him. Yeah. To Dangerfield, when he did the Young Comedian special, which was the launching pad. Mm -hmm. The Young Comedian special. He was like, Rodney, you gotta put me on. And they were all doing blow up in the fucking Crest Hill, whatever. And, and he was like, I don't, I don't know, kid. I can't do the accents, <laughs> but like, hey, we need Sam Murrow for this. But he goes, come, just come watch me. Come, let's go right now, one o'clock in the morning. And he goes and he sees him and he goes, fuck. And it might have been coke fueled, I don't know. But he's like, nah, yeah, I'll get you in. Yeah. So Letterman was the same way. You could tell. I'm, I'm, uh, um, it's too bad that fucking Kinnison and Letterman are dead now. But like, um, you can like, <laughs> so you can never dead. ask. I, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> I think I saw him when I was biking the other day, but it might have just been a bum. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, New York, you're, you can you blend really in really it. easily in the city. But he goes, this next guy, you guys are in for a treat. I don't know what to tell you. Here we go. It, it was just like, this guy's so out there, he changed comedy. Is it in the 80s? Early 90s, probably. Okay. Let's see it. For Kennison? Yeah. So he was, this is right before he Because he was so filthy. It yeah. was like... Let him in, Kinnison. There's a story of you. You obviously know Mark Breslin, the yeah. the founder. First appearance of, of 1985. Oh, okay. It was a well, uh, we're in for something now, folks. My next guest <laughs> is making his network television debut tonight, and we believe it's long overdue. He is one of the strangest and most original comedians working today. Brace yourselves. Brace I'm not yourselves. kidding. Please welcome Sam Kinnison. Okay, so the cheers he gets, I'm inferring, mm -hmm. we know who this guy is. Yeah. He can't be on network television. Letterman knows him from workouts at the comedy store. Yeah. You know, so he's like run into him a bunch. He goes, oh, this guy kills, you know? But he knows, like, I had to pull a favor to get him in. But the audience responds. I'm inferring, again, these are cheers of recognition. Yeah, yeah, they know who he is. Uh, Shickley does not get those when he comes out. No, I don't even know how he, like... Uh, he's not I, famous anywhere. He's not famous anywhere. No. Like, did he even get his... A ticket for his mom? <laughs> that appearance on Carson? I don't know. You know, again, like, we know all these people. Right. Like, and everybody who's listening to this knows all these people. Like, and I'm sure someone listening to your podcast knows who Peter Schickler is. But it's not a lot of them. Like, they know because they're maybe dad. Or, I'm who, saying a someone... Comments. Who, that's a comments thing. Have yeah, you ever heard of Peter yeah, Schickler? Be honest. Be, yeah, be honest. Or completely make a joke out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people, I'm sure... Like, because like, I've talked Actually, about this. Actually, if you have a story of molestation by Peter Schickler <laughs> <laughs> in your past or your mom might, please, in detail, write or out if... those details of molestation or abuse <laughs> in the comment section of the YouTube of this uh, uh, podcast, youtube.com slash Ari Shafir. You know, or if you're like a former Mossad agent and you worked if with him. If you're a Mossad agent and you worked him to capture Nazis. Yes. Uh, the big ones from Argentina, please <laughs> weigh in on the comments right now. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe he's, a, he's a spook of some sorts. I don't know, but easy. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind. <laughs> wow, this is very interesting. It is wild. Huh? I would like to know what the fuck. Let's see if Louis wrote back. I doubt it. Yep, he knows him. Does he? The PDQ bot guy. Okay, so all right, there we go. So, so Louis C.K. knows who PDQ Bach is. He win four times. That that's I would love to fucking know what what his take on this is. Um. Oh well, we gotta talk to him about it later. He knows him. 
the he, PD knows, he knows of him. Guy. Yeah, like he's, of him. he's a he's a student. Okay. Of the fucking game. Okay. Because I've I've met a I, lot. That of... could have gone either way. Like no. Or, yeah. But he cares about the Grammys. Okay. I bet he's seen every four. If it's four, if you care at all about the Grammys, you might forget somebody here or there. Yeah. You know and I'm sure guy. as someone who's been nominated and won a Grammy, maybe he's perused this list. Or I mean, he, he he's of the age. But it wasn't to just where... like I recognize the name. He won a Grammy. It was the PDQ Bach guy. Yeah, yeah. So he knows PDQ Bach. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Wow. I mean, again, he won four Grammys. But he won four Grammys. You can't take that away from him. No. But he doesn't talk about it. Like, I've I've watched all the... He doesn't have a lot of stuff on YouTube. Like, if you go Peter Schickler, not a lot of stuff. There's some interviews, and they're always classical music related. Like, they're not about yeah, comedy. Right. They're that never comedy-centric at all. And they don't talk... They don't ask him about the Grammys. No, no question. What's it like winning four Grammys? Right, right, right. Did, did you get... Did you get fuck, fuck some hookers like this? <laughs> you know? Yeah. What, the night you won the Grammys, were you doing blow? Because really, you can see from the beginning of that, he knows how to play piano. Yeah. Like quite well. And he's no, a he, professor of music, right? Yeah, so he's, he knows he's a very talented musician. And he just took that talent and then goofed up a little bit. Yeah. And then, like, that's amazing. Yeah. To the <laughs> but then, like, okay, even if you, this is your, you know, pet project and you go, I'm even going to go as far as putting an album out and then. Like, how are you going all... Like, he obviously gave him the system. I, I don't think it could be clearer than that, that he, he definitely gave the system. But uh, still, like, the just... I, I mean, okay, so the Louis knows him, so that would be the second person. I mean, Pat Oswalt never got nominated in the, in the in the aughts was when he was at his fucking Which it was absolute, his, his absolute yeah. murder best. Yeah. He was the most tag-heavy guy of all time. Yeah. He would just be like... Here's a setup, and then we're just fucking beating it to death without any more setups. He was so fucking good at like Largo in those days, and he won in 2017. For what? This, or, for what, Orange Man Bad? Talking for clapping. Mm. But I mean, I just want to know his early ones when they were. If it was like, how could personal life? Uh, discography. Okay, here. Oh, nope. Okay, 2003. Uh, two, feeling kind of pat in 2004. Where it was in Lollipops 2007 on Sub Pop. I mean, these are when he was fucking. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah. This is, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was like 2007 was, yeah, Where it was in Lollipops was. He was he was just murdering. Murdering. I mean, he, yeah, he, he's a killer, but. That, and that, um, like, I guess because he was still a little underground-ish. Not underground, but like, I could see him maybe not being like, you know getting in the Grammys. There must be some sort of industry process to get in unless yeah. you are like this cultural thing that they can't ignore. But like he was not... Yeah, you probably have to submit. Yeah, you have form. to submit and you probably have to pay to submit. Right, which is kind of lame. Yeah. yeah. I had a dream of winning uh, the uh, best show or best newcomer at Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, because I was like way more advanced than the other newcomers. <laughs> but I think... um. What's his name? Was had the same thing. Uh, Eddie Pepitone. Yeah, he came twenty years into comedy, and people are like, "What? He can't win Best Newcomer? Like, why? Is his first time here?" Yeah, and they're like, well, "It's supposed to be for six year comedy." <laughs> it's like it's his first time here, and they had a big debate. But I wanted to win, but then I found out if you'd sell over three hundred seaters, like you can't, you're not. Uh, oh, you're not eligible. Yeah. But I wanted to win and get up there and be like, "I don't accept this. It's an art form. <laughs> there should be no thing, and just smash it. Sure. Like everybody, come take a piece if you have a show. Come yeah, take a piece and of part of like that's the thing. It would be great but, if. That's what he was doing, was taking the piss right. out of the whole thing. Being like, see how stupid this all is? Yeah. But it requires him to follow up on it at some point. Yeah. To say like, hey, this is bullshit. Like, oh, look at all this too late. fucking- My album came out last year. I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fucking go and fill out the fucking forms. Yeah, I'm sure you talk to your agent. I'm sure there's a process for it. To get and it I want to get a star on the walk of <laughs> <laughs> That's You pay 10 grand. 10 grand? Yeah. That's worth it. Yeah. If you're like a mid-level guy, like your mom would be so impressed. Yeah, star on the walk of fame. But it does feel like no, no, you you've achieved this level that we're we're bestowing it on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I didn't nah, know that. I pay. thought they do like the city of Holly yeah. West Hollywood or something just like has a <sighs> committee that's handing out stars. Damn, this is so interesting. I know, and the the thing is, is the clock's ticking on this. On finding him. On finding him and talking to him about it because he's eighty-seven years old. Dude, here's him in two thousand ten. He looks old as shit. Yeah. He looks like Santa Claus. That's 2010. That's, that's 20, 2010. That's 12 years ago. Yeah. So he's 87 right now. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, 88 this summer. Graduated of Juilliard. Yeah. No, no, no. He's I like mean, a he's, proper, yeah. like, I don't know if you, if you know who Philip Glass is, but he's like this, you know, super famous composer. They're friends. Like, he's talked about the fact that he's friends with Philip Glass. And, wow. Yeah. 
Peter so, Q. Bach, there's a whole section. Besides composing music under his own name, she has developed an elaborate per- parodic persona built around his studies of the fictional youngest and oddest of the 20 odd children of Bach. Wow. And, and I can't stress enough how much I will concede that he could win this once. To a large degree, Schickley's music as P.D.Q. Bach has overshadowed his work as a serious composer. <laughs> no, it hasn't. No. <laughs> it really hasn't, though. Because nobody knows who they are. Well, I mean, I guess Louis knows who he is, so that, that's not true. But uh, I guess that is true. But still, it's like... Schickley has composed more than 100 original works... For symphony orchestra, choral groups, chamber ensemble, voice, television, and an animated adaption of Where the Wild Things Are, which he also narrated. He made a brief foray into cinema with Bruce Dern from Silent Running. Okay, wow. Wow. Yeah. This, I mean, this guy, yeah, you got to find him. I got to find him. I, like, I think I know potentially, I don't know if, because I, I found like How the, would you, sorry, the address that, is listed on his website for his merch company. Yeah, is like an apartment Have near, you reached, near uh, the Barclay Center. Like he's doing it. I don't. It seems like more likely it would be his son or something. Have you reached out to him on Twitter? Yeah, everywhere. He, you can't DM him on Twitter. I've DM'd him on Instagram. I've sent him an email. I've sent his son you a just message. Tweeted at him. He does, he's not on there. Like his last he's tweet was there. was like six months ago. Yeah. And like when we, I talked about this on the boys cast when I first found out about it. So then, like a lot of people were like tweeting at him and stuff, and like he's just not on there, you know. Yeah, he sells his like tote bags. July six, his daughter's fucking two thousand years old. Also, he's still selling PDQ Bach merch. Yeah, but like I don't know. I think he's selling a lot of PDQ Bach merch. Maybe I should buy something just to maybe somehow. Maybe. Yeah, Send maybe me something. That gets. I get... mean, also, you're going to want it before it's before he's gone. Yeah. How would you broach the subject? I, I don't know. I've thought about it because I don't know can how to. T- it'd be, can we talk about the Grammys? You'd, you'd have to almost. Here's a way. To, you know what I heard uh, Ali G would do? Yeah. So he's just, just like punk, you know? Mm. And he'd show up and he couldn't get a real, at least in his mind, he couldn't get a, someone to really open up and, and agree to an interview if it's his fucking, you know guy dressed like a fucking you know ghetto guy yeah so he would come in set up the cameras as his camera guy would be in a suit kind of waiting off in the corner saying hi how you doing to the other guy not introducing himself but let's say i'm ali g you're my camera guy you wear a suit Mm. i'm wearing the ali g stuff now you go talk to this fucking senator right get him okay i'm i'm ali g i'm setting up the cameras to the senator it looks like yeah yeah, totally and then you you sign these releases everything like that and then he goes are you ready to start and then the Swap. suit guy goes behind the camera and Ali G and they're just like, wait, what the fuck? And so they're already off balance. You would have to, and they don't show that. You would have to say, I want to talk to you about your career. Yeah. Do an hour and a half of interview where you're not going to use it. Right, right. That that is probably you go, hey, I'm just like I'm fascinated by your whole career. How is it teaching? How do you get a professorship? What's tenure? Is it is it an interesting thing to get a tenure ship? Mm. Um, what is it like seeing your stuff in <laughs> in movies? Sure. And then and they'd like, be like, it says here you won uh five Grammys. <laughs> what was that like? And then five Grammys for classical, four in a row. And, and huh? You have to have him go. Interesting. It's not for classical. <laughs> it's for comedy. You'd be like, what? So what you're a you comedian. You know, so you're stand up. Like no, no, not really. So listen, I paid these guys seven bucks each, <laughs> which at the time was a lot of heroin. See, I would. Uh, the, the, my actual hope in it is that he was just kind of taking the piss out of it, but I don't. I don't really understand. Did you see this Tucker? I saw a Tucker Carlson clip. Every once in a while, he'll be like in my. Um, algorithm yeah yeah and i think he's hilarious yeah he's very funny there's a few of those um on full uh, sand podcast what there you saw him on the full sand or on his show his show i think one of his shows but there's a couple of the um fox news guys that i just think are very funny um he's one of them got felt another one and then most of them are just too serious yeah yeah but he's interviewing this guy who says he has a thousand um protesters ready to go at any moment and he goes we were protesting trump and then we got a lot of hate uh protesting for trump or something like a, a uh for January 6th and we got like a hate mail so now we're processing against Trump because of the hate mail and and it's, Tucker Carlson starts to be like hey dude so welcome to the show thanks for doing it so I looked you up you're a fraud uh, really that's, this is not your real name it's not to, to read Joe he goes uh, it's it, the two L's it's uh, to Rio and he goes that's also not a real name and he goes well we have this company he goes you don't have a company I looked you up what's your deal dude you're a fraud so what's your deal and he goes no no we really are and then he just like keeps talking to him and eventually he realized this guy's just because he's gotten all these major interviews yeah. in major news sources, right wing and left wing. 
And he goes, so what are you doing? Are you just trying to like mock the media? And he goes, no, man, I'm, a, I'm really, and he realized he's been caught, but he's yeah. like playing along where he goes, he goes, what's your real name? It's, it's Torijo, Torijo. And, they, and he goes, what are you doing? He goes, just think it's interesting that I could get on, right? You say I have a fake website. I have a Facebook that was started two days ago. Right. It's interesting that I get on these major media. And Tucker Carlson just falls in love with him. And he goes, you mocked my whole fucking industry. <laughs> and he goes, well, I'm glad you found out on air. He goes, no, nah, I found out before the fucking show yeah, started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have you on. My first words out of my mouth was, I know you're a fraud. Was this recently? I think so. Oh, I, I just saw it recently. But it was like. If it was that, if it was, I just want to show you what a fucking fraud situation that is. That That's even fine. a classical fucking whatever could win not once but four times. I'd be like, damn, that was fucking baller. Of course, but he has to like part of it is he has to come out and be like, hey, you guys are all full of shit. Yeah, you have to do that. And he's not doing he's that. Not doing it. <laughs> maybe they're like, keep your mouth shut, or your daughter gets killed. <laughs> yeah, maybe again, or maybe like I just don't know what he gets out of it. Because he doesn't use it to his advantage. Like you'd think it's the part of it is like the fame. Yeah. But he's not like leaning. He doesn't lean into the fame of a five time Grammy winner for in a row for comedy. That's a record to look out for. Yeah. A Peter Schickler record. Yeah. You could probably have uh, a better around. Most of the, that one won. I think Class Clown won or did not win. George Carlin. This was, that looks like what, 70s? Let's see. George Carlin, Class Clown. Let's see. George Carlin. Napalm and Silly. Wait. Oh, I had to be. No, that was, yeah, yeah. Let's see here. George Carlin, FM and AM. Steve Martin, Steve Martin, George Carlin. Oh, wait, it had to be there, right? George Carlin, Evening With. No. George Carlin. Damn. It's so hard to find the fucking nominations. When was that? Can you grab that back? Let's see what year it was. Looks like 70s. Uh, 1972. 72. So George Carlin, FMH. Damn. So it would be 73. Not nominated. Class not Clown nominated. was not nominated. And then Richard Pryor, which I did not put up because I was afraid of getting demonetized for that guy's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, when what the fuck was Class Clown? I thought he won for that. That's the one with seven dirty words. Yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. This record could say in seven words you can never see on television. Hearing it could infect your mind. Wow. Different time. Curve your spine and lose the war for the Allies. Damn, wait. I can't believe that was never nominated. Occupation Fool. Wow. I mean he was up against Cosby probably. And even with, yep. Like But ever, not nominated. But not nominated, yeah. See, I could see that would be like a weird kind of crossover time when comedy was kind of becoming like a bit of a different thing. So they were. They, I, could, I could see them also go, fuck this guy. You can't curse like that. We're, ex- we're yeah. You. It could have been just that, where they're like, yeah, we're not nominating someone who's cursing. Class Clown, 72. Um, doesn't say shit about it. Does that have a parental advisory? What's the red sticker? Uh, no, it just says, war- yeah, warning. This rec- this is before parental advisories existed. Wow. This record contains seven words you can never say on television. Hearing it can infect your mind. Wow. Curve your spine and lose the war for the Allies. I guess the... V- when did the Vietnam War end? I think it's Mid-70s? still going on. Yeah, I think it's still going on. Yeah, never forget. Fallen soldiers are still there being taken. <laughs> what's that? Right? The, the, what's the POW MIA? He does always like there's some guy still in a bamboo hut. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know the war's over yet. Damn, dude. Well, this was fucking interesting. Yeah, I'm, uh, that's a nice conspiracy. Because there's no answers. There's no answers, and it's the, the answer. only comedy conspiracy that's like a true. And I mean, I might be making it up, but no, it we is have a... more that we talk about in private. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. <laughs> like, why is this guy? Why does anyone say this guy's funny? <laughs> um, yeah, we, yeah those, of course. Those are, yeah, those yeah, are... but this is like a true like. Kind of what is going on here? Yeah, I mean it is a conspiracy. There's cause, not even right because people conspired to make this happen. Right, maybe, likely, 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 because it's not. It's not like we said. If you're nominating fucking Kathy Griffin in 2020 or or, or whoever way past their prime, you're like, well, they're famous, famous. So I can see how they get fooled. Yeah, there's an angle where you could be like. They're wrong, but I get it. Sure. I can't see an angle on this. No. And if he won four in a row in classical music, be like, sure. He's, you're it's, in. It's Hawk Perlman decided to do a whatever. Sure. You know, they nominated Dolly Parton for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 
They said, we'd like to put you in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She turned it down. Really? You know why? Why? I've never put out a rock album. Okay. She goes, I'm a country star. I've never put out a rock album. She goes, that's not to say that I won't. It's a goal of mine to put out a rock album, but you can't put you in a Hall of Fame of something I've never done. It's disrespectful. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's cool of her. Yeah. I like Dolly Parton. So like, but she won all these awards for the country. Yes. Right? So it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that makes sense why they'd be like, we want to put you in this rock and roll thing. If he won all these awards for for classical, mm-hmm. they'd be like, he's this well-known guy who's now trying comedy. Let's loft him up. Yeah. But yeah, it, it really makes zero sense. It doesn't make sense why he, you know, doesn't talk about it. Yeah, why does he His do interviews that? don't, it never comes up, the Grammys. You've seen his interviews? There's not many. There's like five on YouTube and it doesn't come could, up. Does he still teach? No, no, no. He's, Damn, he's long retired. We could audit his class. Oh, I would be there. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> no, no. I think. But he lives see? like either on in Brooklyn or he lives like on the upper like west side or upper east side or something like that. Like he's close to us. He's so around. we can find him. We can find him. He's around. What are your dream interviews? Do you have any? Him. Him. That's it. Here's who I have. One I've already given up on. It's this guy who like used to steal jokes. And I really wanted to like get like it's okay. I'm not mad. I want to yeah. know how you started with it. I want to know who, who like beat you up, how that felt, or what how your names. I really just want to know like whatever. Like and name a list of people who you stole from. Yeah. And so like get forgiveness. <laughs> like, move on. Yeah, yeah. Know? Just by own up to it. List three hundred of them. Um, he was like almost gonna do it and then like not. But I was like, hey, if you're not gonna be honest about it, I can't air it. Right. And he was a like, close, close, close. Couldn't get it. He's a well known guy. Well known guy. Um, and then and now I'm like done. But like um. Uh, the guy, he's dead. I really wanted for a long time. The guy who started the Westboro Baptist Church. Yeah, yeah, the Phelps. I got him and his and his uh, daughter. I think we were on radio, me and Rogan, and they were calling in. And the radio host and Rogan just started berating them and stuff. And mm. it, it really made me mad because I'm like, guys, guys, you have to go. What's your goals here? Yeah, you, you can't berate them. This now it's just screaming. Man. Of course, yeah, yeah. It Before has to be like an interview. It, yeah, yeah. It's like I just want to know what your thing is. Do you want to kill all blacks? Do you want to kill all gay? Like it's okay. Yeah, you rid the world of gay. Yeah, I mean, you want them to essentially yeah. say yeah. Uh, hang themselves. Yeah, like I, it doesn't they're... matter if I think you're right or wrong. I just an unbiased. I just want to know what your goals are here. Yeah, and be like, and this, is this the way to get it? Why is this the way to get it? Why is boycotting? I'm not again. I'm not against you, but why is boycotting a heterosexual soldier's funeral <laughs> yeah. picketing it going to get you this? Yeah. Um, or does it just get you the press? I, I don't know. Yeah, like are you just in it for the press? Him, those two, and then there was another one that I was like, it was a dream. Ah, oh, fuck. Fuck. I, I had it in my head and I don't remember it now. Also, like still alive, but like can't get him. There is a one. This is a really weird one. I don't even, I, I only because I've seen him doing podcasts recently and I just used to be so into wrestling when I was a kid. But And I would love to get The Undertaker. I think me and Ryan would, would... That would be cool. That would be really cool. And he's like, does podcasts now. Does he really? Like, not a lot, but... I mean, he was on he was on Rogan. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Him and t- Tony Hinchcliffe. Tony went on with that. That's yeah, and it was like... Yeah, it was like... Tony was like... <laughs> slack jawed. Yeah. Damn. But, yeah. But this guy, I would just... I just want to talk to him. This very interesting. Because if he died... I mean, maybe his kids know, like... It's not the same. But yeah, not the somebody same, said, why don't you have the daughter of the guy? I'm like, no, no, no. The daughter of the guy's just... I want the guy. Yeah. Fred Phelps. Fred, Fred Phelps, right. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. It just, it was always so weird to me that no comics really know who he is. Yeah. Because we're in comedy. Yeah. I also want any child molester, not a molested, but a molester. Yeah. Those are in comedy. Or a rapist. And just like, but child molester is a lot in comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But just like to like, hey, I'm not judging you. I just want to know, like, like what? Do you think you're sick? Is it like an unfair system, or like, like I just want to know everything about. Yeah. It. Do you ever see How those those like uh, YouTube channels where they like bait bait pedophiles? Jay's and stuff? always Big Jay's always uh, Big Jay's special April fifth on youtubecom slash Who the fuck knows? I think it's at Big J Okerson Comedy. You can find them. Yeah, it's very um, very findable. But yeah, that that shit's wild. There's this one guy on yeah, the, Twitter the, who has like a big one where all he does is just get uh pedophiles b- baits and them. just bait them it is it fun them. it's like it's essentially the chris hansen thing you're like. living in the shadow of hansen and you're still doing it it's pretty bro- bro- yeah bro- but Sh- hansen's kind of living in the shadow of hansen because he's not really doing anything now that's his whole thing yeah it's like all these like like uh who's the the, the black female t- uh republican and um whatever Oh, Candace Owens? Yeah. They yeah. all like made a name for themselves doing this thing, and now they're like, well, that's how I make money now, so of course. now I'm going to take this side on everything. Yeah, 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 I can't just be like, 
Saw a great movie today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. With my kids, if you ever a liar, liar is great. By uh, Jim Carrey, still holds up. Yeah, you can't be like, you know what? I think drag shows are kind of fun. Yeah, even just for adults, you can't be like, no. Yeah, you can't even do that. You can't be like, right, right, right. <laughs> all in on the subject. <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah, be like, yeah. guys, it's a fun place to get a drink. Everyone's hooting and hollering. It's yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah. Um, ben Shapiro's like that too. I assume it's just like, can you just do regular? I maybe he does. I don't really. Know. No. Yeah. I mean, again, he's damn. What a conspiracy! Yeah, it is. It is a. Uh... I want the answers, and I'm not going to get them. And it's, it's maybe we could. Maybe like we, you know, there's someone who shares an agent with him or something. We can get like, we can get in contact with him somehow. But again, it's the extent with we just don't know. Like maybe he's just like, yeah, I won them. Like, what is there even? To I won. Yeah, discuss? exactly. He was like, no, they just nominated me. They nominated everything, and I caught Storm, and then they really liked yeah, it. Yeah, he goes, you know, I was just like on a heater four years like, in a so row. What? <laughs> yeah, he's just like four I years in a row. Heater, I... Yeah, because like that's the weirdest thing too is that they're all the same. All four albums are like, if you go listen to them, same same wow. thing. It's the same, same gimmick four times. And a thing that is very bizarre is that a lot of it is physical. And you're listening to an album. Wow. And this is specifically an album category. Right. When there was like not really a lot of video stuff. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Real uh real head scratcher. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 It's it's baffling. It's an unsettling feeling because we don't have the answer. Yeah. And again, like, you know, you probably you've been comedy for how long? Like, you know all about comedy. Yeah. Never heard of this guy? Forty eight years. Yeah. <laughs> You never fucking heard of this dude. No, you never heard him no, mentioned. Never heard of him. It's crazy. Louis knows knows it. Yeah. How old is Louis? He's in his fifties. I think fifties. Fifties. Yeah. Still sharp. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 But uh, I, I guess love maybe all these guys like it's hard to comedy once you're this age or this rich. I'm like, well, Louis still crushing. What do you mean? Yeah. He's still crushing it. Oh, he's <laughs> yeah. It's like Louis there are examples good of as people ever. who do it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to commit a little bit. I mean, it's essentially there's a few there. There's a, a mindset. It's like the Kobe Bryant's or like the the Tiger Woods where like any sort of amount of money or fame it just doesn't doesn't scratch you that have to itch. drive from within yeah, right yeah. right that doesn't scratch the itch whereas buster douglas won a heavyweight title and was like oh, i'm done i'll cash in one more time on a, i mean all that's with Harley I, Field that is like, the norm i'm just gonna eat yeah that's the norm yeah. is, is that's what happened to they, you they yeah and then when you, i see it now with sports where they're like well, how's that kid doing the, whatever it's like hey, he's 24 and he has 17 million dollars you want oh, yeah. him to like buckle down 17 million it's a lottery win yeah and he's 24. i mean 17 million dollars there's so many guys like the nba yeah, way way more so they it's get a like, hundred yeah, million dollars you never heard of them yeah i can i can also just keep making this money and not try yeah they don't like they don't play much and yeah. they, they make 25 million a year and they're yeah like, it's like you're not good you're not starting anymore it's like no big deal yeah less injuries yeah of course yeah you see them and you're like yeah, that's what i would do yeah well, all right, Peter, if you're Danny, watching, I would yeah. love to speak with you. Please, Pete. Pete. P P <laughs> PD. PD, reach out. We'd <laughs> love to interview. What? What? Do you have your own podcast? Yeah, I have. Uh, well, he we can have him come on the boys cast. He could. Uh, that would that would be the, probably the best venue. Really talk to him. Just really talk to him. I mean, no, because I wouldn't even expect for someone who's that eight, like I'll come to him. We'll get a camera crew. We'll set up wherever he wants. I'm just I just want to talk to him. It won't yeah. even be. It'll be more closer to a documentary. We'll come. Yeah, he'll come to your house. Yeah, I'll come to your house. I'll bring a camera crew. We'll chat. Um, I just want to. In know twenty what's up. years, people are gonna want to know your name. Yes, and hear and your think voice. You would want people to know about you. Yeah, like and nobody does. And there is Nobody a does. way to do that. Louis C.K. does. Yeah, Louis C.K. That's interesting. Yeah. But does Louis C.K. Yeah, I guess he knows Peter. He knows, he knows the name, yeah. Yeah. But I'm curious to think what Louis thinks about four yeah. Grammys in a row as someone who he knows the process. Next time I see him, I'm going to talk to him about now, it. He knows the process. Now, of, I'm of definitely going to bring it up. Yeah. Like, what do you know? How do you know about it? What do you think? Yeah. What do you, what do you think, think about four in a row? Is? That's a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Danny Polishock, Thank uh, you, Danny Jokes on Instagram. Guys, reach out. Let them know if you like the episode. This was an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I, I I take every opportunity to talk about this really? whenever I can. Yeah. yeah, when you said like this is a subject, I'm like, eh, this is not really. And then I thought about it. I'm like, nah, yeah, let's, let's do a deep dive on a subject that you care about. Yeah. And I'm like, and I, no I, I feel like, I, I mean, I've read and you know I've watched everything that there is, which is not much. Which is not much. You got to the, the heart of it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, and there is probably one person watching this who was like, "What are you talking about? This guy's the best." <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot! 
You just don't <laughs> know his real stuff. Yeah, it's, fucking, it's politics. You just don't now. get no. It's you don't get it because uh, you're like you don't you know classical music. But right, right, yeah, you're a fucking dolt. That's yeah. why. Yeah. All right, Danny. Thanks. All right, thanks, uh, buddy. If you guys want to start with an episode of the Boys Cast, uh, I'm on the, uh, this last this past this week, week. I think. Yeah. When does this come out? This come out Tuesday. The next Tuesday. Uh so you. Oh, we gotta do a dates read. As soon as we're done, we'll do a thing, an insert, so we can put out dates. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, check out my recent appearance in the Boys Cast. Yes. Um, I think it's coming out this Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or my last one. All both fun. Yeah. Good times. Um, hell yeah! All right. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So, see you guys later. Later. Damn, that's it, everybody. That's the episode. Very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you, Danny. I did talk to Louie about it afterwards, and he said um, he did completely know who he was, and he said musical comedy was bigger then, but not. why didn't it last? Why well, don't I even know the guy's name? I've heard of uh, Victor Borges, you know? Uh, he was musical comedy. Did a thing where he did speed reading music, and he just go, blah, 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 and then turn the page, da, 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 and then turn the page, da, 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 and turn the page. I don't know. But I do know um, that I don't know anything about this guy. Mystery is not unraveled at all. Um, Peter, if you're out there, reach out to Danny. I think he'd love to talk to you uh, about the time, the place, the zeitgeist in general. It's been very interesting. I'm Ari Shafir. This has been Ari Shafir Skeptic episode something. I don't know, 513 or something. With Danny Polishek. Don't forget to check out Danny on uh, on his podcast, The Boys Cast. And don't forget to come see me in, uh, in Europe, in UK, uh, Glasgow, London, Manchester, starting April 27th. Glasgow, London, Manchester, show out of London, I believe show out of Manchester. Um, Amsterdam, Vienna, Stockholm, Berlin, Ljubljana, that's Slovenia, uh, Cluj, Naboka, Bucharest, those are Romania, and uh, Athens. And then the Wrong Side of History Tour. Beyond a little blip of uh, Joe Rogan's club and June 23rd and 24th, the main shows will go on sale on April 26th. No, well, the main shows will start in, uh, that's it, we'll start in fall and winter. Use promo code EVIL for all those shows except the fucking Rogan show. That's trans beauty. Two words, space in there. Could be one word. They, they might hit you with one word. If you get the code wrong, they might hit you with one word. I'm not writing this pre-sale code down because I want to like make it last. Um, besides that, the pre-code pre-sale code will be evil. April 26th at 10 a.m. local time, everything will go on sale. Chicago, Minneapolis, Madison, Iowa City, Indianapolis, Louisville. I think maybe Lexington. More shows will be added. More shows will be added. So Iowa City. St. Louis, Boston, Philadelphia. You want to get in there? You want to get tickets? I am saving $20 tickets for every show. Yeah, not for the Rogan show. Every other show, all the theater shows, I'm saving $20 tickets. At the Vic, that's right. At the Wilbur, that's right. At the fucking uh, Orpheum in Madison. Saving a section of shows of tickets that'll be fifty to that are twenty dollars and limited uh, service charges, because I care about you. I'm not one of these LA comics who want to bleed you dry. I care about you, and I want you to come see the show. And I know a lot of you guys don't have a lot of money, so I'm saving some tickets, probably fifty or a hundred, not the whole thing. And there's still going to be some fucking seventy five dollar tickets up front. You ain't getting up front for that money, but I'm going to get you in because I think I can convert you to be a fan for life. You come see that show for twenty bucks. You can sit in the back of the nosebleeds. I think you're going to have such a good time. You're gonna come Once you get some money, you're going to come back and see me again. You're going to sit closer. Also, I just like it's just you got to save some tickets for the poor kids. Well, that's the episode, everybody. Hope you had a good time. Until next week. Next week's episode should be Andy Haynes, and we should be talking about uh, doing some moving stuff. Uh, coming up, 
the 2023 State of the Union in probably four more weeks. Should be great. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ari Shafir. This has been Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, The Curious Case of Peter Shikola. See you next week.